I'm Peachy. I am the voice of Patrick. I am Jeff. And some of you may not know who this beautiful looking specimen of a human is. It's Pete the Wargamer. Hello. Hey, Hello. Pete. You have a face. I know. A lot of people you just think of hands, face. but I actually have the rest of my body too. It's not just a disembodied pair of hands. So, so I have been aware of you for mm. a few years. I'd say five. You've been going longer. A yeah. lot longer. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute because okay. that was interesting because I did a deep dive over the last few days of what, what you've done. <laughs> that's uh, that. <unnerving. laughs> yeah, really I know about your like, credit history. <laughs> <laughs> I know about that incident in the park. We'll talk about that later. That did uh, sound quite sinister. <laughs> it did, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean it to. I was going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry about this, Pete. <laughs> he, does it, he does it for the most innocuous things. It was a thing we were talking about about meeting fans at um at salute i managed to make it sound like they're going to be taken off one at a time and murdered <laughs> in the public toilet it was I, really I mean, weird yeah i mean it, it sounds like that might actually happen i mean if i had to get credit checks coming here this now explains why people when i was a manager used to get really scared in the meetings. i don't know why i was just chilling and chatting yeah but but yeah it's great to have you on the show thank you for coming on yeah uh, no, it's you. nice to see you in the flesh at least more than just you. more than just forearms yeah um so yeah, I was I was going to ask some questions. Mm-hmm. I've got a few in my head, so obviously we'll get, come to your gener- you know, where you started off from, okay. stuff like that. But I think I became a fan of Pete the Wargamer when he painted eventually in Noble. And that was about five years oh, yeah. ago. That was my first introduction to you. Like I said, you've been going longer. And it was, I can't remember if it was just before or just after I moved to Warmer TV, because mm-hmm. it's around that kind of like time zone. Um, and we, we had done some stuff for the army book. Um, and a bunch of the guys in the army painting team had like converted like the indignant indignant prefects. I think they're called now the ones with like the skitari yes. heads yeah. and stuff. I did those um, as well. Yeah, yeah I did. I yeah. saw that as well. Um, which I was like, oh, that's very pretty. Better, better done. Um, and yeah, someone had said, oh, have you seen this paint guard of of your ventrally nobles? I was like, how oh, dare anyone <laughs> take my ventrally nobles and do it? But oh, it's really good. <laughs> 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 I might watch more of this guy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so my I think it was around about the. Because they came out in one of the army books, it wasn't the yeah. obviously the most recent one, not that one before. Was it like I want to say not seventh, it would have been eighth, yeah, at least one of the iterations because it was after we moved from seventh to eighth, and then you had the sort of index mm-hmm. starty books, which was like to keep you going by. And then they did yeah. the um, Imperial Guard one, and it, that was when we were like, there's no new plastics coming out, make some cool stuff, yeah, because it was really cool because it was there's loads of different, um just different conversions that people had done. There's like the Indigan Prefects, yeah. the Ventrilli Nobles, there was the, the the ones you'd know about, like Savlar Chem Dots yeah, and things yeah, like that. There's yeah. a few like quite nice ones that were, were a bit new as well, as far as I knew. I think some of them maybe had in that really old Imperial Guard Codex that had all of the regiments yes, listed in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was nice. So I thought, well, people want, are going to want to know how to build these and yeah, paint yeah. these. So yeah. My biggest cool. bugbear with that was they did the Myersman Red Cows. Mm. And at the time, what was, I think it was available for a month was the um, Wood Elf Archer set. It was like an old Warhammer set. Yeah. It had like the Wood Elf Archers, the Blade Guard. And it went out of sale that month after they'd done it, after the release had been they so used the, their heads yeah they used oh, one of their heads in in in, oh. in the conversion because at the time it was it was available yeah uh it was like we should have done skitari ranger heads with the hoods because yeah. they would have fit as well well i have seen people who've done that and just yeah. used the ranger yeah. heads as well but yeah but yeah so it was it was nice to to obviously watch through like, i've been looking at a lot of your, your recent stuff and the content uh, i'm loving the thumbnails i know pat's a big fan of like thumbnails and like <laughs> uh description stuff like that so it for me, uh, I don't know if you guys have been looking at some of the new stuff. It's like it's such a tease because it's you see like <laughs> like a conversion, like Kabuski's done because you you've done some stuff yes, based on Kabuski or yeah. like uh, oh the frosted out thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, was just like, oh, I need to see what that looks like. Damn you! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. smart move. Yeah. I'm, being, I'm being tricked into this, but I'm not mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no clickbait. It's just like yeah, you. And you know the you know the worst of it is is that your process is so watchable that when the video comes out, I can't fast forward it to the end to have a look. I go in and I think, and then you get started and the, the voice kicks in and then, and I go, Oh, go on. Then. <laughs> I, yeah, I really haven't got this amount of time, but I joke. did that. I did that with a talent. Cause I was like, I want to see what it looks like at the end, but I need to watch the whole yeah, thing. Cause yeah. I don't want to like spoil. It's like Christmas. <laughs> if you, if you squint at the thumbnails where it's all pixels, you can, you can actually make it out quite well. So if you look at it, squint it at it and you're like, like that, you can actually see it quite a bit because it all blurs together and becomes less oh, pixels. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the trick. Oh, but I do put like, I, have said oh, well, that. Yeah. <laughs> I do put like the, the chapters in as well. So if someone just doesn't want to be like, oh, yeah, it's going to yeah. go right yeah. to the end and have a look at it, they can do. But I think, from people I've spoken to, they watch, they go to the NC and like, oh, I still want to know how it's done yeah, now. Yeah. So they still go yeah. back. So I, I, it's like a nice little tease to get, get people into it. But 
Yeah. I'm not holding anything back, really. So, your very first video is a review of White Dwarf. <laughs> yeah. That was, <laughs> long, that was like nine years ago. Yes, I think the channel turned nine a few weeks ago. I got like an official like YouTube thing. Yeah. So the channel turned and you've had a few name off. changes because it was Talking Wargamer? Yeah, right? so, this is going to go back, so I'm, I'm going to wonder how far back you know about me <laughs> in my, my first well there's that time when you're at primary yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, secondly, we won't talk about that that was weird um, no, no no nine years that's about it so i so before i even had a youtube channel um i had a blog and it was called the frame paintbrush and it's still available mm. online it's still right. it's like it's it's crap now because it, it's like <laughs> over time that i haven't i haven't updated it in about nine years so it's just but i i basically started out because um I, I stopped doing Warhammer for a while mm. uh, whilst I was at university because it had no money. So, mm. But then when I started working, I got money again, I could afford to do Warhammer. So I thought, well, how do I want to document what I've been doing and keep a track and keep just like a personal log? So I make a blog like everyone did at the time. And I did the Frame Paintbrush blog and I did a few articles on there and a few of my earliest conversions that I kind of did publicly mm. were on there as well. And... I, I ended up doing some war, uh, some writing for the website Taught Wargaming as well, mm. which was around the time. I spoke to the guy and did some articles for that, and then that kind of moved into doing videos, and then it became that. So the channel was originally Taught Wargaming, then it became The Wargamer, and then it became Pete the Wargamer, which yeah. just has been for the, the longest time. Yeah, because it's so, TWG, yeah. wasn't it? Yes, it was Wargamer, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I can't remember when I changed my name. It's probably about six years ago now. It's yeah, quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, I remember, I think the Ventrally Noble might have been the war game at the time because my mate Steve was on about it. I was like, oh, have you seen the war gamers stuff? I was like, who's this? Yeah. And then he was shameless like, oh, oh someone's doing Ventrally Noble. So oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the first time I came into contact with your work was um, my son got into 40K through Scouts. Yeah. And uh, he pushed for us to get the 8th edition starter box. Mm -hmm. And it obviously came with the Death Guard. And you did the Lord of Contagion. I did, Many yeah. moons ago. You used yeah. to be sponsored by Firestorm. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. That, that was right, wasn't it? Uh, so I used to do some videos for Firestorm the, as Firestorm. well. Firestorm, yeah. 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 And um, yeah, you did, um, you did the Lord of Contagion. And I hadn't started painting any. And I looked at that. And then I went out to... to uh, I don't know whether you know them. There's a shop called Boys. We have they're a bit of a, a sell everything sort of shop. Well, they have a small. They always have a small games workshop okay. range in there. And they're about twenty percent off. And I went out basically with a screenshot, the two screenshots of the paints. So I spent about seventy five pounds on paints. <laughs> came back in <laughs> and then attempted to learn to do get. So my death guard for the longest time before he started to get grimier and grimier. Yeah, were based on on that load of contagion. Mm -hmm. I must have watched that. I think I must have earned you about at least thirty or forty dollars because that's the amount of times I've watched that video. <laughs> Just on the AdSense, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I used to do because I used to. I mean, I didn't do it on purpose, but people actually set, made a point of this uh, later on. I used to just put the the paint list in the video. That's right, yeah. And then people used to say, oh, I, I've watched this video like 20 times just to go back and look at the paint list. And I'm thinking, oh, that's just, that seems a bit like sketchy. People might think I'm doing that on purpose. Maybe people watch the video more. So yeah. I, just, I just put it in the oh, description. Oh, no, so like now. say, I'm tight. I just screenshot it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. Yeah, yeah. But it was, but it was great because it was, it was really, it was not, what it was one of those, it was one of, one of the first paint tutorials I'd seen on YouTube where it was great because it, it's like very much with what, with what Peachy does is it never any point to feel lost, never any point mm -hmm. to go, what? He was like, mm. he was going, the cloak is this, cover it in non oil, do this, yeah. do that. And it was just really a, a really great result, but we didn't feel like at any point as a, as a newbie to painting them, didn't feel lost. I thought it was really good. And that's where I've stuck with you from ever since, okay. really. This but, is one of those things which I've, I've always tried to do because... Um, I think you've mentioned it in one, one of the previous podcasts as well about when you're making a guide, you've got to make it so that you can make it as high level as you want. But yeah. if someone has never watched your videos before and they've never seen how to paint something, and you're saying just dry brush it or just pin it or something like that, and they don't know what that process is, yeah. 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 then they've then got to go traipsing back, find the video that explains it or something like that. Yeah. So I always try to include a description of everything that I'm doing. And maybe if you watch a lot of my videos, it might get a little bit greater at times. Thinking, no, oh, okay, I know what this is. But it, it is good because you've got to be aware that that might be the first video that someone ever yeah. sees. Yeah, yours. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've always tried to do. So there's no barrier of entry to watching my videos. You can watch one video and hopefully 
know everything you need to know to build that model and paint that model by the yeah. end. Yeah, I think it's how you communicate it, isn't it, as well? It's like it's, you, you don't have to go over every single step, but you can you can even refer back to videos and, yeah. and pop them in the corner, I suppose. But um, you probably got a bunch of questions. But my, my question is going to be, because yeah. um, I've got loads, um, as always. How long have you got, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> got, this is going to be the three-hour thing. <laughs> uh, so you start off reviewing yeah. White Dwarfs. Yeah. I think like two or three. And then it moved to like box, like some products, mm -hmm. like looking at like kits and stuff. Then, because I, I think the White Dwarf, some of that were like 900 views, some were like in, yeah. in the, the thousands. And then there was, I, th I think the first paint guide you did was the Mars Attacks dude. And then that just like, bam. So, so yeah, I started doing, um, it was White Dwarf Weekly when that was a thing. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. So you see, like, that was a big success, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I started doing that and I used to, um, walk into town and, and get that every Saturday, come back, flip yeah. through it and then do a video on it. And that was like my, why that was my video production. And I started doing uh, reviews as well. Um, and that was really just an excuse to buy stuff and be mm. like, Oh, I'm using it for a review. That's what <laughs> I'm doing. Um, and then I did, I think the first tutorial that I did was zombie side. Oh, it, it might have been zombie side. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, and that yeah, was like yeah. the first one that I did. And it was, um, I think I'd, it was something I did with the army painter. They contacted me and, and were like, do you want, we've got a zombie side paint set. Do you want to do something? I'd already got, bought the game for myself. I was mm. playing it. I was like, okay, this is perfect. Um, so I painted one of the models and I did it. It was quite a, a straightforward kind of painting. It was a board game, lots of models. Don't want anything mm. too strenuous. But I still did the kind of base coat washes and highlights. So you could you could stop at, at the wash stage or stop at the base coat stage if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, that was the first thing. I was like, oh, there's actually something in this. And people seemed to respond quite well mm. so i started doing more and more kind of tutorials and painted tutorials and and less of the the reviews from that point yeah would you say that was around about the same time or i'd argue probably before Rhodes started doing more tv because you'd only been doing it a couple of years before i had and i and that was five years ago i started yeah so possibly yeah yeah so possibly that's, that's interesting yeah because i um i looked through like yeah you've got a lot of painting videos on there now but there's quite a, a broad because this is something we've been tackling with like you know if we do star wars it doesn't it doesn't hit as well yeah with like the 40k stuff and yeah. you know people say there's arguments that 40k is and um, games workshop ruins the youtube sort of um algorithm stuff I, I i guess it's the way it's packaged but you don't seem to have massively suffered from that and i guess you've got that brand that's been going because you've done some napoleonics in world war ii yeah. and they still hit like high numbers 40k does get better obviously yeah, uh, yeah. like some of your kit bashes i think it was your hellbrecht is like your most i think so yeah successful, most successful one which is like pretty yeah. and then um was it golden demon in america last yeah. year somebody <laughs> somebody was inspired by your yes, idea yeah. and then they won they won something i can't remember what i think they, won. they they might have won silver in the category yeah i think they, they, they're right but <laughs> it, i mean it was it was what far better done than i than i did it but uh, so i wasn't even like mad that they did like, the same kind of thing um so it was it, but this is this is the thing it's, it's one of those i've got to a stage now where it, it's quite funny to see because i think if you do a painting guide and you show someone how to paint Imperial Fist and you see someone painted in Imperial Fist unless you've got a very different way of painting them there's no way of knowing whose paint whose guide that person's followed or if they just made something themselves mm. but when you do a conversion and it's a very particular conversion yeah. and you see that recreated on Reddit or Facebook or Instagram or anything like that you know that that person's followed you and then you'll see people in the comments oh did you follow Pete the Wolverine yeah, yeah, like and it's yeah. quite nice to see that people have been able to do that because yeah. it's the best it's the best guide as, as to how well you're conveying stuff mm. as to how well people can follow it. Yeah. Someone did um recreated the Angron model that I did. Oh wow. And it was like Brave of them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was thinking, I mean no one's gonna I, th I did I thought no one no one's gonna do this. No one's gonna have a go at this. And the, someone has done it. Yeah. It's amazing because it's just that's quite a, an involved kit bash. Lots of sculpting in there it can be quite daunting for people. But that other person obviously watched the video and felt confident enough to try it themselves, which is great because yeah. that's exactly what I want people to do when they watch my videos yeah, i mean from a converting point of view and there's some really nice simple kit bashes in there yeah. but obviously you use green stuff a lot here mm -hmm. and there for for um obviously getting things to look less clunky and stuff i mean i i know from my experience i tend to keep it to plastic and then maybe fill with super glue because i'm lazy <laughs> <laughs> um but i was looking at your uh, tau auxilia i can't remember the how to pronounce 
the name Scrav Aok. That's it. Yeah. Thanks. I knew you would remember. Yeah. <laughs> but you went like down like a mushroom route, didn't you? Yes. Like a fun- uh, it was really cool because you got the domed head, which looks like a mushroom, yeah. and then the weird osteop bone reaper like spines. Yeah, because they're also really like cool models they are. Yeah. They? But yeah, the conversion, a bit of green stuff in, it wasn't that... I was looking at it again. I'm not that good at green stuff in. Mm-hmm. I've done a few videos for Warmer TV, but that that's not... It's well done, yep. and you need a, you, to build up the skill set, but you can watch that and follow it, which is the important bit, uh, which I think I've seen a, a fair few videos out there where you see something and go, cool, that's amazing. Well done for showing off your skill. I'll never be able to do that. But with the stuff that you do, I th- it feels a bit more achievable. feels like at least gets you wanted to roll some green stuff up yeah. and give it a go. Well, um, I think this is good. This is the thing, because... I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say it, but if you look on Instagram and you look on Reddit and stuff like that, there are some people who are amazing kit bashers. I mean, mm. The guy who won Golden Demon last year with the, the Mega Gargan being yes, the cracker. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing conversion yeah. work. It's, it's far beyond what I could do as a kit basher. I could give it a go, but mm. the results, I couldn't get anything near as smooth and flawless as that. But what I do isn't, isn't necessarily that high of a level but I think I just try to convey it enough for people to understand it. And a lot of it's just little tips and tricks. Like with green stuff, as soon as I realize that if you get silicon tip tools and use some like Vaseline or something, it makes working with green stuff ridiculously easier. But I only learned that two, three years ago. And I've been using green stuff for years before that and just not being able to do anything with it. And as soon as you learn that, and when people have followed that and, and, they've been able to yeah. massively up their game. It's just that little tip and tricks and stuff like that and then just practice over time. Yeah, I remember the Perry's and I think it was Ali uh, when I was doing some green, real base. I think I, it was an Orc Commando, mm-hmm. like a boss snick roll, what it was called. Um, and I'd give him Beret, it looked like ketchup and poured on his head, to be fair. <laughs> it wasn't great. I like it. Oh yeah, by the way, we're looking down at Palace. <laughs> I'm just mixing it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they were like saying, oh yeah, keep your fingers constantly wet, yeah. you know, because it, it doesn't stick there yeah. and you don't get the thumb prints and stuff. So I, I've always like lit my fingers, but then I get really sore fingers because it sucks the moisture out. So I'm constantly like licking, which I'm like, yeah, <laughs> what? What? chapped. I actually remember there's a White Dwarf article from years back. That, I mean, this is probably about 20 years ago, maybe nearly going back. And it was said someone was, was green stuff in and they said they always lick their fingers because it's good to keep it. But then they actually found that green stuff maybe back then I don't know if it still is anymore was, like was a, actually mildly toxic yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like you shouldn't really be doing that and I did use to use water <laughs> well I did use to use water and then, and then I saw you, the only thing is if you if you do use Vaseline you need to like make sure when it's dried you like wipe it up a yeah, little bit but it's, yeah. it, unless you like getting a big scoop of it and slapping yeah, it on it's yeah, not going to be a problem a for painting bit. no it's yeah. a nice tip and it's something I'll, I'm going to be using when I, I do more green stuff in or modeling putty yeah. um but yeah the, the just seen for me it's like the nice journey seeing the kit bash seen it in plastic because that does another thing i've noticed when i put post plastic conversions on instagram they do better sometimes than the painted version mm-hmm. um and i think it's because people in their minds i can put their own color scheme on it yeah. and go oh swap that so having that as a part of your video is quite good because people can just like well i'm not going to paint it the way yeah, you painted you can just it skip to the end. but i've got that nice aspirational design that i'm going to follow but yeah there's some really interesting conversions you don't know big fan what originally drew you towards converting mm. um the first i was thinking about this actually not too long ago and the first thing that actually drew me to converting was um lack of finances and it sounds like it, considering some of the, the recent videos that i've done that probably cost more than the original model would have done <laughs> um yeah so the first, I, I, it was not long after I'd started playing Warhammer War 40k and I was collecting Space Marines. And it was when the first plastic Space Marine Commander came out with like mm. a few extra bits in, in the kit. And I went into my local shop and I picked them up. And the guy behind the counter said, well, if you buy a box of five tactical Marines, there's enough spare bits in that Commander that you can add them mm. to the squad and make five veterans and <clears> like <throat> give them different weapons and different heads and stuff. And that's exactly what I did. Mm. And from there, I literally just would, rather than buying metal versions of models, I would just take plastic bits yeah. and make my approximation. They were really crude stuff compared to like, I found one of the guys actually is, is broken, but he had um, he had two knives and he had, but the thing is that the only way I could get the arms was he kind of looks like, the knives are snapped off now. So it just kind of like, looks like he's just doing that. He's just standing <laughs> there, he's got one arm up like here. Because one arm's like a repositioned bolter arm and the other arm's a repositioned like a 
they're just strange combinations of arms. So he, he's got no knives and just standing like that. Do the mashed potato. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was so, trying to think of the dance. Yeah. 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 Nailed it. Good, mashed potato. <laughs> so I think that was the first thing that I did. And I used to do like, if there was, I didn't really like working with the metal models. So I used to get like, try and build my own inquisitors rather than buying them yeah. and things like that. And then over time, I just started to do it a little bit more. Um, get a bit more adventurous with it as yeah. well and build it from there. I've done um, a lot of converting with metals and you're there for ages with a saw, sawing away, then pinning. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, so when I, when I started hitting plastic, because obviously plastic became more widely available for all the kits out there, yeah. I don't think I've ever done anything that's metal since because it's just it's no need. I did some Too fine cask and kit bashing. Oh. Oh, that was brave. That was <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so well, that's just what you do with a normal set, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, so I, I did a um, Cato Sicarius using his fine gas model, mm. and Pedro Cantor as well. Mm. Um, and I did a Halbrecht before he got re-released in plastic as well yeah. and made him into like a primus version mm. which is annoying actually because if you look at like the reveals from, from Adepticon last week once again Games Workshop for stealing my conversion ideas <laughs> yeah, and building yeah. them as models so I'm um, I'm be, they'll be hearing from my lawyers very soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the highest yeah. form of flattery, though. Yeah. Surely, <laughs> the thing is, I think, I think speak it, it's one of those things. People said, "Oh, yeah, Games Workshop for stealing your ideas," and I, I think they mean it in jest. But what you said in the, in the past is stuff which is in the background of being worked on for years and years and years. Mm. So, like by the time I come along to do something, it's probably already been in process for like oh, yeah. two years by yeah. that point. Um, it's 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 weird because sometimes people just have the same mindset. Yeah, and and pretty much come. Because when you did your Talon Desert Raider, I mm -hmm. think we were filming our Talon. You use green stuff for the head wrap. I use masking tape. Yeah. And I think they came out roughly around about the same kind of time. So people could say, you copied his idea. You copied No, I think well, it's just like, no, we're, we're trying to... Got that mindset and yeah. just like, that'd be cool to do Talon Desert Raiders. Your colour scheme's slightly different to my colour scheme, which is good because it gives people options and stuff. Yeah. So um, sometimes it is just that that coincidence. Well, it's like how like bows were invented like simultaneously across mm, like yeah, ancient yeah. civilization with like groups that wouldn't have interacted. Yeah. But I've seen the one of the ones that I did as well, going back to my Raptors kill team. Um Is I this did one with the things on the shoulder pads. Yeah, the one that <laughs> big fan. Well, Jeff doesn't <laughs> like. <laughs> I knew it'd come up. So, uh, I, I was watching that video and genuinely right I got to that point in the video and he was like, Why has he got pouches on his back and his shoulder? Like, what can he do? And I was thinking, they're for the other squad mates. And then and then I think it was you Pat who said yeah. actually and I was like, Okay, well I can back away and just yeah. away from the keyboard. It's okay, we've been so he's been piled on. <laughs> 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 Um, but so yeah, it, it was. Um, I look completely lost my trail of thought now. But yeah, that's that's kind of where. Oh, bows at the same time. Bows. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. it. Yeah. So I was doing the uh, the scout, and I used the uh, Necromunda Goliath bits for it. As and uh, yeah. um, since then, I've kind of gone through, and I've people have popped up on Instagram. I've gone through and seen what conversions they've done in the past, and quite a few people had the same idea, but yeah. they've maybe released their stuff at like different times, like before I did. But I didn't see their stuff mm. as well because there's just a lot of stuff with. If you look at a kit, there is a lot of possibilities, but there are only going to be so many possibilities are actually going to work for a certain result. So a lot of people come to the same conclusion with things. Yeah. Um, so some people will think, oh, it's copying or something like that. Sometimes you do get inspired by other people's stuff. Oh, yeah, sometimes yeah. you just have the same idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that I mean, Kabuski has been really good for me because he, uh, during the lockdown, he did the uh, Sisters of Battle on horseback. Yeah. He was like, oh, I've got this idea. I don't know what you think. I was like, I really want to make that. So mm -hmm. I was like looking at like some form of steed to put my Sister of Battle on. But I'm like, what legs do I use? Oh, the nearest legs I've got, like Drakari, I got Dark Elf, I think were the legs I used. Um, but yeah, just seeing the stuff he does with his like digital kit bashes. Oh, man, he's so good, doesn't he? Yeah, and then you, there was the Ultramarine Auxilia. Yes. Um, yeah. Which, for many levels, was one, it kind of fitted in with March from a crag. Um, two, it just looks amazing. And you make a good point saying this this is kind of the levels for like characters, for yeah. just the troops. You just paint them in blue armor and stuff, yeah. which I've seen people do with like the old Cadians, which made sense. Um, but what I really liked about the video um, is that kind of like reusability, going, I'm just cutting off, I forget what the. Um, I always call them tassets, the loincloth drapes. Yeah, they are called... Uh, this is the thing. So what do, on YouTube, and you guys probably experience it as well, yeah. 
if you're ever referencing historical stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. very good I'm, at making sure you get the exact pronunciation, <laughs> the exact name. I think they're called uh, Singulum Militare. Yeah, yeah, like I know that's something with it beginning yeah. with an S, yeah. Um, I couldn't remember it because I was watching it going, oh, is that what they call it? That's yeah. interesting. I, used to call them I completely tass- forgot it. Let's call them tassets. Yeah, and same, yeah. They say tassels then. Like, yeah. No, he's not wearing tassels. He's wearing... Yeah. Uh, a, I think tassets are kind of to the side sometimes, aren't yeah. they, as well? Yeah, um, I think they can also be the ones that kind yes. of come from the shoulder yeah. as well, yeah. But yeah, the, the, during that con- conversion, you go, what I'm doing is cutting these bits off, but this, the rest of this is still good to be used for yeah. the ultramarine. So I was like, top tip there, make yeah. sure you reuse your, your bits, just don't bend them, you know. You've been very careful to cut it off so it was like reusable. And I, I think as a, as a kit basher, that's something I do a lot. I don't, when I cut like a hand off a model, mm-hmm. I keep the rest of the arm. Yeah, because I'm I'm using that open hand from Blood Bowl because I want like an open hand like I don't know to do a thing cast a spell. Yeah, yeah. But the rest of the arm's fine. Yeah. So still that goes back in the bag, um, where I think some people just think you're just wasteful and just chuck it away in the bin. Go, hey, landfill, come on, let's, let's get rid of all these extra arms I don't need. The well, the, the, a good GW has its recycling program now. Yeah, there you go. It does. Can so, put all those extra yeah. arms in there. Yeah. So the only thing, like I I do keep them, and if I do any like my own conversions, I'll use them. But it's very difficult for me to go in a future video and be like, okay, so go back to this other video, yeah. build this video, and then use the parts that you've left over from that video yeah. to build this video. <laughs> yeah. So I, I try not to like re So if I ever do something and I need that torso again, I'll probably just get go one, and yeah. get a fresh yeah. torso for people. Yeah. But yeah, it is a good point. I do, if, I, if there's a part which is still usable afterwards, because mm. you've just taken a hand off or even a really small part of it, mm. then I do try to say, yeah. keep it. I think if you don't say it, and this is something I've experienced, if you if you don't actively mention the thing, people don't think it's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sounds mad. Uh, like, make sure you do this with your brush or make sure you wash your brush after you finish painting with it. People are like, oh, you have to wash them after. Because yeah. some people just don't know. Yeah. So obviously mentioning the thing, I think, is, is useful. I mean, I know I'd keep it myself because I'm used to kit bashing, but, but yeah, uh, putting it in there is, is, is good. It, it's funny when you realise how little people who aren't in the hobby don't know one of my mm. customers has um has just bought his son do you know that 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 really low level um kill team box it's still got the death core in it's got the orcs in it, oh, but it's not got yeah. a lot of scenery yes it's, i know yeah, 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 yeah. it's got yeah. loads of the barriers in yeah, yeah it's yeah, got yeah. loads yeah. of barriers and just the rubble yeah and he's bought his son that and he said to me um he said what do i need to put them together and i was like well first of all said so you're going to need a decent pair of clippers and then he looked at me and went what and i went clippers and he went because you know they're on a frame, and he went, yeah. So you've got to snip them off, and he went, oh, he said, I was just going to just snap them out with my fingers, and he was like, and you know, and you want to go, yeah. good God, man, what yeah. are you thinking? But yeah. you also then think, that man just yeah. does not know, yeah. and he's literally has bought a thing and knows nothing about it whatsoever. I suppose also, if your first ever kit is one of those scout models, they're designed to be pushed out the sprue. Yeah. So you think if that's the, if you if you're in scouts or like a schools league and you yeah, get yeah. these sprues and you just like, oh they just push out if you then get a box you think, think it's yeah, the same all gonna yeah. be the process same. Oh, right? Oh, oh. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. they pop out. It's I think I used scissors on the first kit that I ever. Oh, nice. It was Mario <laughs> Mario goblins as well oh, with the little tiny little <laughs> fragile spears, and I managed hey, to get them all off without destroying any. The only thing I did do it, it was <laughs> it was when the went much cop after that with the thought. I my mum was happy. So it was it was the Battle Games of Middle Earth magazine. Yeah, yeah. So I started with that. So uh, Minds of Morrow is like issue one, and then issue four came with alerts, and it was alerts. He had like a bow. Yes. It was yeah, metal, yeah. And he had like obviously it was metal model, and he had like lots of tabs. So I was breaking those off, and I broke off his bow, thinking that was just like a little bit of oh, a bit and of then, flash. Yeah. yeah. And then when I actually came to paint, I was like, oh no, he's only got like half a bow now. So it's like <laughs> oh, it's got a folded no. shoulder. Bow. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember we did a, a thing in store retail. Uh, so Duncan, a couple of guys uh, were obviously in the Derby store, we were all together. And they kept forgetting about like what we used to call add-on sales. Like when you, at Christmas time, people were like buying the big box sets. We were like, have you mentioned about clippers or glue? Because it's like selling a kit, uh, like a, a remote control car to a kid and not mentioning, oh, by the way, it needs batteries. It doesn't yeah. come with batteries. Because mm-hmm. on that Christmas morning, the kid's like, yeah, I got my car. Can't use it. Everywhere's closed. Can't, yeah. can't get the batches so you've yeah. just got like a thing that you can't do anything so I was always like make sure you mention about glues and clippers and they kept forgetting it because you're hobbyists you just want it excited you want to get people yeah. in playing games we weren't very salesy that's probably terrible but we did alright as, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a store and I was like you know what because it's, it's a thing we need to do as a business I'm just going to get them on before we open for training build a model with scissors and glue it with sellotape see how they get on <laughs> <laughs> and 
they never they never forgot <laughs> <laughs> you're just like hazing your own staff <laughs> Cause, cause said, this, this could be you Christmas morning because yeah. you've got no glue yeah. you've got no scissors yeah. well, got I, no... Would, I wonder how many kids end up at A&E on like Christmas morning with super glue like oh, just like yeah. super glue their eyes yeah. and their hands and their faces and stuff like that because the dad's like oh just use some super glue you'll be fine you'll be with fine, that yeah. Yeah. do you know I always think you know it would always be a good thing you know I know it would mean sacrificing half your Christmas day but you know if you just rented a pop-up shop for a morning and it just sold batteries of all sizes tiny screwdrivers yeah because yeah obviously yes, a lot of the of course, time yeah, yeah. Sc- and then and, you know, Stuff maybe, mix and if you well. just hired like an oven and you go what you burned the turkey I've got three on the go <laughs> <laughs> it's great oh, that's you know, a very good idea Christmas recipe yeah, yeah. Just, just all of the things that you just could either yeah. destroy yeah. or forgot to buy but in fact you could almost you know you get like like three double A batteries yeah that's 70 pounds <laughs> <laughs> You, you, I think if you were the ice cream man, summer's your biggest time, right? Yeah. That's that's your business for winter. Yeah, just go yeah. around on Christmas Day, you know, with the jingle. Okay, yeah. well, batteries. Triple A got you sorted. Just there like you go. The, so the Christmas emergency shop. So future proofing. I think you know everything. Obviously, when we were kids, and we get our remote control cars, you put the batteries in. I imagine a lot of them. Everything comes with like lipo batteries now mm. that are like built in. Yeah, so USB chargers. Yeah, yeah, so you have to get your USB chargers and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's true. And really make sure that you uh, I'm figure still it all stuck out. Stuck in the eighties, aren't I? Yeah, the f- massive, great big batteries you stole from like the, the work. F- <laughs> yeah, you, do you remember them? Oh yeah, yeah. So you had the big flashing lights. And you used to have the big batteries. We used to, you always used to be nicking them. <laughs> <laughs> the future's now, old man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, during oh, sorry, I was just going off on a tangent. This is what we do on it's the right, show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many times when we used to come back from school because we had a coal fire at my mum and dad's when we lived in the countryside. We had a coal fire, and my dad needed sticks and like logs. Sometimes the log order wouldn't turn up, or we just couldn't afford it. So when they used to do the general election. You had all the signposts. Yeah, <laughs> used to take those home. <laughs> nice. All one. Cycling. The only one so much. Actually, all one used to be. And and I now when I look back on this, I can't believe it was a thing that there wasn't a gazillion health and safety issues for. They used to have these metal boxes by the side of the railway, and where in them was these things that were probably about the diameter of the top of a cup, and they put them on a railway line. And it, they were there for an emergency. So if a train went over them, they made an extraordinarily loud bang. Mm. So the train would know to stop. We do, we just knew them as what was called detonators. They were like a little round metal disc. So everyone used to crack them. And then it'd be great fun would be like trying to make them go off by hitting them with bricks and big heights and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't like children just playing blind and the missing fingers. Oh you know, my think, God. Imagine how loud a bang it's got to be for the train driver to yeah. be able to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the idea was they used to put them on railway lines so if there was an emergency they could they, they would get the train to a stop very, very quickly. Uh, interesting. But, oh, but right. they just used to leave them in a, a metal box or a padlock on at the side of the railway line. That's, oh, I guess, yeah, I suppose in those days it was like you just wouldn't expect people to, well, kids. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. Yeah. you have to find all sorts of things to keep you entertained. So in. going back to Warhammer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back, it back to the I, topic. We've all seen the uh, Warhammer community articles yeah. um, where they send review copies out to YouTubers, uh, painters, and you're like, oh, here's this really noble Imperial Fist guy for Horus Heresy. I wonder what conversion Pete's done. <laughs> oh, he's a Chaos guy. Um, do you think Games Workshop would be more surprised if you just painted him up like the box art? <laughs> probably yeah because <laughs> have, they, have they ever said um like can you just can you just do this one normally pete or, um, like, or like the first time when you were like here he is you, you, like one, all you one of my questions that was going to be my oh. was like what the hell's that <laughs> so <laughs> so when when we get the when we get those like articles and stuff we usually get like an email a few weeks before or so so yeah. oh, we've got like a date and it used to be can you paint it up and because i always would send an email like, oh well, i'm going to convert it to this is that okay and they're like, yeah, usually, every time they've been like, yeah, that's fine. And But they've actually started to include it in the initial email. Like, oh, if you want to do painting or a conversion of it now. Oh, cool. So I think they kind of just yeah. expect that I'm just going to send them an e back and I can, yeah, can I just yeah. convert yeah. it, please. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think I've ever done one of those. I mean, I actually painted it normally. The only thing I have done, which is at the minimum amount of kit bashes when I did the um, World Eaters for Horus Heresy last year. Mm. Yeah. Um, and they said, like, you can do a little bit on your characters and maybe unit leaders, but keep it fairly out of the box the rest of it and that's probably the most I've followed the instructions in yeah. the last nine years I was going to say oh, I mean because wow. as a kit basher I tend to have to add something yeah. to a model I can't not do it now yeah. so the only time I've not done it was when I was 
painting some stuff for community and it was like some underworld's war bands mm -hmm. it's like a couple of little war bands here and there and it was just to show off the new contrast paints yeah um but then i i had my own cypher lords and i was like i want to make him slanesh i give him a load of the hedonite heads because i've got like the wraps they look a little bit like haradrim yeah um but I, they look like ninjas and they look mega and That's i was like cool. i can't help myself i have to literally get that kit and that kit and go blah, 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 yeah. And yeah i've made a thing I was like, maybe we're like dr frankenstein maybe we're like evil scientists if it was like the the victorian times me and you would be like evil scientists we were like you know possibly yeah. it'd be like pete and peach <laughs> <laughs> let's go and rob some graves yeah <laughs> what we're we gonna make today we're gonna give him a spider leg That's <laughs> we just, i think we're just like really watered down anti-authoritarian yeah. like I will, I will not follow the instructions <laughs> i believe in your rules yeah <laughs> I don't know about you. I, 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 I don't really... know. You should just start every video with the instructions and just change them. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, you know what you could do. You know, like you get those um, like books for kids where it's like different heads, different yeah, bodies, yeah, yeah, different legs. Maybe we, we should just make yeah, our own instructions. Just do that. Yeah, oh, there you yeah. go. Whip it around like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is a great idea. So uh, my, my burning question: uh, You kind of touched on it a little bit at the start, but um, your journey mm -hmm. as a hobbyist, because obviously you're at uni. Yeah, uh, but I assume it was before that. So yeah, I, it was. Um, Battle Games Middle of Magazine. Yep. I liked Lord of the Rings at the time, so Good advert lad. came on the TV and I was like, I still like Lord of the Rings, but yeah. the advert came on the TV and I was like, okay, it's Lord of the Rings, that's cool, it's got my attention. Oh, these little miniatures and little models you can paint. And I've like, maybe painted a few Airfix kits up until that point, mm. so I thought, oh, I'll go for it. It was like, I think the first issue was two quid. So I thought, well, great, yeah. you get paints, paintbrush, 12 Mario Goblin. So I did that and basically just kind of got into Lord of the Rings from that. Um, so I, was pl I, I kind of bought kits and there was a club at school and we had our history teacher who was into historicals so mm. we already had like quite a lot of stuff like boards and stuff that we could use which is great for Lord of the Rings which was just trees and hills yeah. and yeah, yeah. rivers and things like that and then there's a few of the guys there who were from like the older years so I think it was about 12 at the time that when I got into it and a few like the guys who were in the higher years they had 140k and mm. fancy battles and then that's how I got into it from that um and then I started collecting Space Marines and I had a, an Empire Army as well for nice. fancy. And then I kind of played that, played games with my mates and things like that. We used to go up to the local games workshop every Saturday, play games there. And then I went to university and didn't have any money for it. So I kind of sold a lot of it off actually, which is a shame. I still got a few little remnants here and there. And then when I got back, got back into it um and yeah just kind of built it from there and pretty much been doing either the frame papers blog or yeah, yeah, youtube yeah. channel since then so because i remember my very first kit bash what would you, what was your first kit bash if you can remember um I, I think it would have been that that space marine yeah one i think but the the one which i i actually found it the other day i was gonna bring it with me I completely forgot um our store used to have kit bash challenges mm. so they would a little bit like how they had the um, the hobby hangouts that like Warhammer Fest and stuff like that. You go in and there just be a pile of sprues that they've been using, like offcuts and stuff like that. And it was like okay, you can just you've got to build a duel. That's what you've got to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And everyone else is like getting uh, clipping off a, a, an elf or a space marine or something like that and making them fight on like a bit of rubble. And I, it was when Skull Pass had come out, mm. and we had like the it had like the dwarf plastic little mine train yes yeah and it had like the plastic cannon in there as well yeah and those bits were all like loose like a tiny toy cannon always yeah so i built a dwarf dreadnought out of them <laughs> and i'll have to send you a picture of it because i found it the other day it's great and it's basically so the jewel of it is i'd spent so long building it and it, it's, it's only about that big but um i was like oh, I, need, I need to actually have the jewel aspect of it so i basically glued him to a door from one of the old scenery kits mm. and there's an empire state soldier who's just like on his back like that and there's like he's like bearing down on him with like this spinning axe thing which is like a, a dwarf keg that was in that kit with axes sticking out of it, it was just like on the <laughs> oh, nice <laughs> and i use like mainly dwarf parts so, and it's actually quite a fun little kit bash and that was the first thing that i did was that was beyond just being oh, i'm just going to build a um, like a space room with a different head mm. or something like that. Uh, and then that year we had a, it, they had like a, a Christmas theme competition and it was Father Orkmus. And it was, ba you kind of, you would build a sleigh and you would play a game and everyone, everyone collected as many presents and stuff like that as you possibly could. And everyone had, had just kind of got one of the orc chariots and stuff like that and mm. built it around that. And I got a truck, the old orc truck. And, 
built like this you know in the Grinch film when he builds like the jet sleigh oh yeah yeah. I yeah. basically did that with an orc and had like <laughs> I didn't have any uh, plastic grots at the time so I had uh, knoblars from oh nice yeah, yeah so they were like hang one of them is like hanging off a, a banner pole so if I, I put him so cut the banner pole off and had it so that was like a lever and then stuck him on the on the cockpit so he's like as if he pushed it forward and it was just like flying <laughs> forward through the air and I had a little father orc mostly had a little Santa hat and a sack with like a last gun poking out of it um, I, just, I did a video on it not too long ago so I, I dug it out and that was like the, it was at that point I was like I can do yeah. quite fun things I don't have to follow yeah. the rules I don't have to just build a space room with this I can build something a bit more interesting I just kind of always have done since then I think the interesting thing for me and because I don't know if you get this through comments on your channel but a lot of people go you know where do i start with kitbash it seems so complicated mm -hmm. and for me i've always said a head swap yeah a hand swap yeah. that and then once you've done that you've got that confidence and you try something a little bit more complicated and when i say a little bit more complicated it's like a head swap and a hand swap yeah and then maybe a hand swap that does another hand swap so you're not doing just mashed potato you've got yeah there as well. <laughs> um so that, that that was always the thing for me because i always used to think it was it this crazy sort of like you had to be a sculptor, you had to be like a, mm -hmm. a, a 3D artist to be able to, to to do this. And seeing some of the old Slayer Sword winners, which was almost like the sculpted a model from scratch, mm -hmm. it was like 54 mil. I was like, oh my God, that's insane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just got to start with like the simples, right? And I think I think the barrier to entry to kit bashing is probably the lowest than mm. the any other part of the hobby. I think it's easier to do a kit bash than it is to do like to improve your painting. Yeah or to get really good at playing the game or get really invested in the lore and everything because like you said you could just buy two space marine kits and if you take a space marine helmet from one kit and stick it on another kit that's a kit bash yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the bare minimum of a kit bash it's not like it's not particularly complex the parts are designed to go together you can still use pre primaris heads and helmets on primaris models yeah so that's massively opens it up and up for, you can get like sanguinary guard you can get all the old dark angels blood angels stuff that they release you can mix and match all the primary mm. stuff and a lot of people don't realize that and don't necessarily want to buy the kits to try it out see if it works so i do the video so yes it works and they're like okay cool i can go and get those bits mm. i can get that kit and i think that's the biggest barrier to entry with it is often it does increase the price mm. um it doesn't have to if you're building like an army you can just like touch on earlier you can just do unit leaders or characters yeah. and paint the rest of the army that can do an awful lot yeah. but i think anyone who doesn't who is too scared to kit bash just doing the bare minimum yeah. you will get a, will get you hooked on it and you'll enjoy it and you'll yeah. do a little bit more and then you'll start chopping bits up i saw um the first sort of kit but like you say like a head swap that i saw um with some heavy intercessors that you showed me jeff and yeah. somebody had put Centurion Devastator oh, helmets so good, on, they? Um, yeah. and they look amazing. Yeah, they look really so good. good. Yeah, and then I was like, I, I built some Centurion Devastators that are currently just primed, and I'm like, okay, so I need to snap the heads off of them <laughs> <laughs> and then build some heavy intercessors. <laughs> I, I remember doing because we used to do these tip of the day videos for Wama TV, and we used to do like a range, and one of them was like kit bashing different cultists. And I think Duncan had done a couple and I'd done one and there was a Slash one. And I was just like, well, I wanted to keep it really simple and you use, you use what we've got. So I did Delax with Cordor because they did the resin Cordor. They had a lot of snarly faces yeah, yeah. in Cordor. And I was like, well, I'm just going to do that because that's really straightforward. With the intention, I think the intention was to do some paint videos of them, but we yeah. never did. Uh, probably stealing your ideas there. <laughs> um, and I remember getting slated by the manager. Rhodes and Roger was just like, that's, that's a bit too simple. I'm like, Hang on, so we just overcomplicated for the sake of overcomplicating it then? Yeah, and then, they then, look then it good, went on. They look good. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, they, they, it was simple. It was, I wouldn't say they're like the best slash cultists out there. I mean, you can do more, but it was about trying to make it accessible because a lot of them were like, you need to cut this hand off here and reattach it to there, and you need to get this head that has a different because you've got the ball socket on this one. Yeah, it's yeah. also got a ball socket on that, so you have to like carve away mm -hmm. and stuff. I was like, that's just so much effort. It's just like simple head swap. There you are. That's, that's a nice, easy sort of entry level thing and yeah even the comments were just like this is like a waste of time it was like only two minutes it's like oh my god i'm trying to make it easy for you i mean next time i'll overcomplicate it then clearly well, this is the thing because like quite often i'll get the opposite so yeah. i'll do a complicated conversion and some people will be like oh well now do this for a, a, an army of a hundred these guys and it annoys me as well but because in the video i'll specifically say i'm going yeah. to do five different ways to convert the space yeah, yeah mix and match across your arm you don't yeah. need to do far, all five things on one guy you can mix and match across different models different unit leaders things like that and i'm just giving you and rather than building five models i'm, giving, mm. I'm just doing on one model um but yeah it, it, it is frustrating because you're either too complicated or not, not yeah. complicated enough but yeah. you mentioned necromunda 
I'm yes. going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to segue now. Oh, oh nice. Got, we like on. segues. I've got a little special <laughs> I love this box lunch well. box. Yeah, this is... Um, this is lunch boxes. <laughs> sidetracked on our own show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. so it's great. I've actually got gifts for everyone. Oh, oh no. Um, gifts. And I know you guys have been running a Necromunda campaign. Yeah. So I thought, well, I haven't, I've haven't. i used a lot of Necromunda parts in my kit bashes, but I've never actually kit bashed any Necromunda characters mm. or anything oh. like that. So or the free, suspense. So uh, I'll start wait. with you, Jeff. Oh, Wonderful. So, oh, thank you very much. So I've made you a little um, Dalak. Oh. Um, and the, oh, he's so suitably evil. So the theme he's that amazing. I was going for with him was I've been playing, like, I quite like the cyberpunk aspect that Dalak have got. And I thought I've been playing Cyberpunk 2027. And I thought I 2027, 2077. And uh, I thought it would be good to like have a Dalak who's specialised in hacking machines or hacking into like servitors or getting through cogitators and oh, breaking man, down doors. He's amazing. Thank yeah, you so no much, Pete. I'm going to pass him around. You know what we could do as well is um, pass him back around to mock up some because we've been using Yak Tribe and you can actually add things into Yak Tribe like okay. skills and stuff. So you could give oh, him like skills so cool. you don't normally have access to, that's like tech cool. stuff. Well, uh, we'll get some photos and have them put up on yes. screen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What head is that? That is a. Um, from the Electro Priests, the ones that have got like the eyes burnt uh, out yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, if you look on his shoulder, he's got like a little. Yeah, spirit, yeah. Because that's yeah. his eyes. Like, yeah, his oh, eyes have been burnt so out. So clever, man. Thank you so much. Um, that's really kind of you. No worries. I'm going to have to go back to my standing position. <laughs> <laughs> my legs are going numb. So I've, I've not painted it because obviously you can paint it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Ones. Thank you so much. Um, so. Pete the Wargamer Originals. This is no. yours. Ooh. It's a Van Sar. <gasps> and. Um, so the the theme it's I was me. going with, so I went through I went through the background mm. of them because that's why I do when I whenever I'm doing a kit bash I always kind of like to catch up on the background and stuff. And Van Sar obviously manufacture a lot of equipment. Yeah. And it mentioned in the in the, the wiki that they have quite a lot of bureaucrats. So he's a Van Sar bureaucrat. <laughs> and if you, um, if you so he's replaces, so I've given him a book. So yeah, he's got I like see a, that, like yeah. a ledger. He's got like a little um, data pad. And he's also quite surprised looking at like obviously some some shipping manifest <laughs> like, it's like, what's going on here they, these are <laughs> Some, someone's been there and he's got a few little extra little bits that's and, genius I, li uh, I like to think that's the rule book yeah he's on there. Yeah. Like, this is the rule book guys so no. I like to think he's the 40k equivalent of that um Carried an overlord who's like putting yes. it at the book. So like he's, just, he, he's the guy who's like look, trying to like, which rule book is this? I love that, that guy's yeah. become a meme now yeah. for like 40k. Well, it's kind of what I've done the, done the thing for. So yeah, that's, that's just great. Uh, Thank you so much. Yours. And he's bold as well, like me. So this is going to be me, <laughs> the rules lawyer. So I think that yeah. head is that's from the new Cadian upgrade. Oh, yes. So that one is, yeah. I need to get hold of that kid. And so upgrade. is the, the hand actually. Oh, I was yeah. trying to work out where the hand was from. So yeah. Yeah, it's like a little map reading yeah. dude, isn't he? And then. Pat, that's oh, oh somebody's axy and chunky. So oh wow, obviously he's uh oh he's so fat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the obviously the corpse going to make a lot of meat, and I feel like maybe one yeah. of them enjoys eating that meat a lot, and maybe a bit too much. So <laughs> yeah. amazing. Uh, so yeah, use one of the putrid blight kings, and then yeah. stuck some of the um, genius corpse growing a bit oh, on the back. And if you've got on the back, there's amazing. like a, a rack of ribs there as well. <laughs> From, uh, totally is. You should call him Lard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I've I've named because um, yeah yeah we we I put the Necromunda game out on our Patreon last night. Yeah. So that will be out today slash a week ago for when this is released. Um, oh, that's so cool. So my leader's called Archive because I'm going with tech names. Okay. So like Archive, uh, Firewall, Frame yeah. Rate. You can call like him Red Tape. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to call him Archive, but Red Tape's much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm all, yeah. yeah. Red Tape. Because mine, <laughs> mine all have meat names. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are a few substitutes. Jeff saw Spies. Mine are all uh, spies movie, spies. movie Spies. Oh, who's yeah. a good like tech spy? Swordfish. Oh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a film. Well, the idea I was going to go for that, because originally I kind of diverted a little bit. It was going to be like a, a Q, like a James Bond kind oh, of Q, yeah, like yeah, in yeah, the yeah. equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I realised that the um, the Rust Stalker arms from the, Ad, the Admech work really well with the Dalek bodies. So I thought, wow, it's really yeah, impressive. Yeah. I really like them. Um, Thank I, you so I much. Think, yeah, because mine all have meat names. So like... Um, Sirloin is yeah, is yeah. The, the the boss, the yeah. boss, and there's Mr. Brisket, and then Tofu, who's yeah. like the MVP all the time. I think I think this guy has to be something rib related, <laughs> seen as they're hooked onto his backpack. 
That's incredible. Thank you so much. No worries. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really good. Really really cool. Thank you, man. I can't that's wait to paint him. He's getting painted tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening. I've got so I've been adding like all sorts of extra bits. We're not. I've not played a game with my Van Sarge yet, so yeah. we need to get a couple of games in for for that. Ready for the next bit. We got the. It's on Patreon now, isn't it? The yeah. Obviously, as the time of it'll be filming, released it'll yeah, be a, really a week ago. The time this comes yeah. out, but um, they'll be watching it going. This is so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the first we, the first game will be up. Uh, it's uh, these two uh, duking out. In the I did. I did watch the first twenty minutes of it last. Ah, oh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need we we we've got like things to learn from it, haven't we, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's and a bit of fun. one of our amazing patrons was a news anchor. <laughs> oh, it's oh, great. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's really good. Landon so, Burke. Yeah, so good. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so, so good. shout out to him. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Love it's great. Guy. Well, this is the thing because, like, I, I've I often collect the Necromunder kits because they're just really good for bits. Mm, just yeah. like you get so many cool components in there, I'm always dipping into them. Um, but I've never actually built anything specifically for Necromunda. I built like a whole squad of um, Van Saar, but then put skulls on them and made them into averse assassin like recruits for the temple. So uh, they were like, before they were fully initiated, yeah. they would get sent out on like as teams mm -hmm. to do stuff and made like a kill team out of those. But I've never actually done anything specifically for Necromunda. And it's, there's so much like background and mm. lore and depth in there that you can just plow it for as much information well, you want to like your tower auxilia i was like literally looking at it going i could make that into a necromunda model because down in the sump you get all sorts of you get fungal forests yeah. and stuff like that so there could be some weird like mutation or just beasts because they get a lot of i mean the, the, there's the hashtag every model is a necromunda model yeah because it's a it's a melting hub of just like commerce and like different so that's why you get squats there you get a diary there mm -hmm. you've got space marines there you got well every faction can find a route to be there to some degree um so like looking at some of those kit bashes you've done i was like yeah i could i could see like adding like weird fungal warriors into and just find uh, i'd use ogryn rules because mm -hmm. yeah. there's always a way of like finding rules and the bounty hunter uh rule set's really good because it has like three different profiles and you at a glance you'd be like that's a short walking thing probably a squat yeah that's like a medium humanoid this is like could be an ogryn or could be a beastman or could be so you can always find a way of yeah squeezing something and that's the great thing about Necromunda is it's really open to well that's what I quite like about I, I never really got into the, the gaming side of it but like the, the rule some of the rule books I picked up just to kind of look at mm. the background and some of the pictures and stuff like that um, and it is just, just it's very like as deep as the actual the Hive is itself there's that much lore and background that's been built up over the years and like all the stuff about um, like the history of the Van Sar and where they came from and it's almost like, like it, it's a myth unto itself which yeah. is um, quite interesting but you mentioned about like the rules which is quite interesting so when I built my that's one of the things that I do try to do when I'm doing kit bashes I try to think how are people going to be using this and with that I built it on a to the rough proportions of a tower battle suit yeah. so depending on what art you give him you could just run him as tower battle suits yeah. in a game even though he, he wasn't a tower battle suit um, but I think this is the thing about that I find with 40k is probably the most limiting in terms of what you can get away with in terms of kit bashing and still have something that's usable in a game. Mm. Um, Age of Sigmar is very free yes, because it's yeah. like as long as on the rough base size and your opponent knows what it is, you can build what you want and like so is Necromunda. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 40k, you have to have it in mind that someone might be using it on a game yeah. and being like, oh, well, what is that? What rules is that? Um, which I mean, is the General's Handbook, I can't remember which edition now, it's probably a couple of years back now, I'm going to say 2019, 2020. They did the um, Anvil of the Apotheosis, which mm -hmm. allowed you to make your own War Scrolls. Yeah. But the thing that I think Workshop misses a trick with, which is why things like Yak Tribe are really good, and I was talking to someone, they've sent me a link, which I need to... <laughs> don't touch, don't don't press on links, but this one's secure, it's fine. Because um, <laughs> I was I was whinging about, like, my Warcry cards got oh, this whole book full of Warcry cards. Uh, it's like a whole folder, because I've built them up, I bought that, that set, because it was really hard to get, and this, yeah. that, and the other. And then they become all, like, superseded by the new rules, because they've got, like, books with all the things, and they're not making new cards. And someone had contacted me saying, oh, there's a really good app where you could literally make your own card, print them out, but you can also put your own photo of your own models oh, okay. on it. Okay, that's cool. Which then says to me, I can make my own characters for games. I can do my own. So if I'm doing like a narrative campaign, I want to do Jeff the Barber, um, who's just got, you know, he's from Congrad. He's a barbarian who like likes to fight, but cut people's hair at the same time um, <laughs> whilst fighting. So that, that, that's the insult. It's like, how many slashes can you get, but also shave all your hair off at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> just sounds like one of my normal days at work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you could, you, I could do that and it's like Age of Sigma kind of had that but they didn't have an app for yeah. it and 40k yeah. feels like with the data sheets you, they, they, which, what we need to do is like a couple of apps because yeah. they've got an app web team because um, they don't really like things like the 
the kill, um, like the different rosters and stuff. Yeah. It just it's missing a trick for me where you could just literally put your own photo in, just your stats. Some people will take the mic, obviously, but for like people like me and like you, kit bash a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, want to make that cool That'd thing. Be awesome. Yeah, it'd be just cool just to get like a bit of a like a, like for that tower battle suit equivalent. You could just get tower battle suit rules, rules, put that in. Yeah, and just rename them a yeah. little bit. So yeah, for yeah. whatever, I'm mean, not. not particularly familiar with the rules but if you've got like a special rule you just rename it yeah. just so it's a bit more well, conducive to worldly, a isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely um, I was going to ask because it's a question I get asked a lot when I've been on like live streams and like uh, podcasts and stuff uh, what is your favourite do you have a favourite kit or at least a go-to range for converting um so the Mark III kit has kind of become a bit of a meme on my channel, where <laughs> if I'm doing like Space Marine conversions, I always end up with the Mark III kit just for the shoulder pads or the heads yeah. or just some of the equipments and things like that. Um, so that's probably the most commonly used, but I do also use, the, I mean, Sisvel Schools bit is like, yeah. that's a utility kit that is, everyone should have <laughs> yeah. one of those, I've regardless of your kit bashes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think which, which else outside of that. I've used quite a lot of corridor parts mm. over time because they're quite nice for like Chaos Cultists and stuff like yeah. that. You can use like well, you a did lot the of Chaos Cultists range, didn't I you? did, yeah, yeah. I did some well, you Chaos did Cultists. one for every. Yeah, so I did a Word Bearer one which had the uh, corridor bodies, but then the head was one of the Dark Riders from like, the yes. Dark Elf Dark yeah, yeah, Riders. Yeah, yeah. And then like they're I made it like faces. A, a big hood and it, it looked pretty, pretty menacing. Um, but yeah, I think I'd probably say one of the Necromunda kits and then the Mark III kits, probably the most commonly yeah. used ones, yeah. I'd say. Uh, I'd say for late, it's not one kit now, it's, it's a range which is Blood Bowl. I find Blood Bowl, uh, I don't play Blood Bowl, which is terrible. Yeah. I don't know what that is going off, someone's like making some nice loud noises. There's, the, it sounds like sounds a lawnmower. Like someone's yeah. like lawnmowering, yeah. Apologies, everybody. The wall. <laughs> the <lawnmower. laughs> uh, yeah, I just found like Blood Bowl, like the kits themselves, you, that I, I find I cut all the hands off. Yeah. And then give them we weapons from similar sized races and stuff. So there's a nice selection out there. But then I've got all these cool hands because that was always the biggest thing for me when I was a kit basher. Was like I want things to be, like I want that hand to be like put in a magazine. Because sometimes a marine you get the kit where he's popping a magazine into into his bolt rifle. But once if you're a Cadian, you yeah. don't have that. That's, that's one thing that, that is lacking in the quite whenever you see I think the Dalax got a hand in it just like mm. an open hand yeah. and whenever you find an arm that's got like a, a kit that's got like an open hand like, oh my god I want to yeah. keep you a note yeah. of that <laughs> and then I'll, I'll use it in the future but it's actually surprisingly rare yeah yeah. I, th I think the Empire Archers was the, the top tier for a long time because they had left open hands and right open hands uh, okay. and it was usually only one side you could get the most oh, of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, you uh, got, have you got a spreadsheet <laughs> um, so I've got like I'm not very good at remembering a lot of things but I can remember exactly where my kits are and nice. I can roughly have got like a pretty good idea of what components are on what kit so whenever I get yeah. a new kit I'll kind of basically study it and look and try and make a mental note Yeah. Um, if, if my wife asks me where something is in the house I'm like I don't know yeah. but if she says okay where's that one hand and which <laughs> yeah. box that and I know exactly which kit it's in and which <laughs> box oh, that's the in. same she's, yeah. she's like oh uh, where's this thing I'm like oh, I don't know wherever you put it last she's like yeah but you used it last I was like oh I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like uh, I was looking for something the other day because my mate came over and he was just like oh you know I'm looking again to get into Walker I was like oh I've got a kit of iron golems you can, you can make use of and I just went box move that do, do, do. I know it's under there I know it's at the bottom there we are straight away got it put those things back and my wife's like why how because <laughs> <laughs> I care about the yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that yeah, the I thing never that. to say yeah. <laughs> never say that to Mrs Peach I care about the house darling honest <laughs> uh, but yeah she, she always laughs at me she's like you know because I'm sure you're the same like when when you're in, in the army and stuff you, you have to like be quite aware of your surroundings and yeah. stuff it's just like you know you, you, you spot things from mile off being a motorcyclist you can see things miles off but you can't see that new vase of flowers that are put in the house and it's been there for four weeks you don't spot that but you can spot that thing a mile off over there I'm like sorry <laughs> I don't look at the flowers I'm looking at like where, where the next sniper point might be <laughs> I'm terrible for um, I'm terrible for storing conversations like we've somebody talked about getting a house somewhere at a, at a, at a New Year's Eve party and I went oh Remember them guy, that guy and his girlfriend moved into that estate, and my wife was like, "Who?" And I'm like, "Remember?" And there was like, she's like, and eventually when we were at we were at Emily's New Year's Eve party in 1999, <laughs> and they said that they just moved, and she's like, "What?" <laughs> so, you know, and then I go over the shop for five things and three in. I'm on the phone. Go. What was the other two things? You went to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. 
<laughs> madness. Yeah, memory. I mean, it's way it's what you you, know, you, say, you yeah. do care about certain things, so you memory more. Yeah, but, yeah I've sure. got something to ask you. What is the um, what's the smallest thing on a sprue you've ever gone and bought a kit for? Um, Good question. It, it was probably a hand. It was probably <laughs> something. It probably was something as small as a hand. I can't really think it. Do, do, do you feel quite? When you, do you feel sort of annoyed with yourself when you have to do it, or do you just have you resigned yourself to it now? So I, I did used to buy individual bits, yeah. and it got to the point where I was doing so many conversions, it worked out cheaper just to buy the kits and yeah. then store them for future use. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem with that is now that I've got so I I store my kits in nine litre two um, really useful boxes. Yeah. And they're great because when you are they in your spare house? <laughs> they're, they're in my garage. So I, whenever I get a kit, I'll basically take it out of the box and I'll, I'll put it in. You can you can lay two of like the smaller size sprues mm. next to each other. And you can stack them up, and, they, and I've got loads of those, and I've got all of, all those like label makers saying what's in the box uh, yeah, yeah. on there. So yeah. this, this is my Scutari box. This is my this is a battle box. And I've just got those in like piling. So I'm in the middle of going through and, and doing that. So I'm, I'm at about thirty boxes at the moment of those. And I need to order about probably about twenty more to get everything in. Oh, oh wow! wow. Yeah. I used to do sprues, and it got to the point where space was running out, so I now cut everything off the sprue and put it in baggies. Yeah. But then that kind of throws up its own problems, which then throws up its own solutions. So um, scions, tempest scions, right? Mm-hmm. Their backpacks and their guns go very particular. Uh, there's a very particular build because they're all loose now in my Astra Militarum bag. Yeah. I'm like, cool, it's not a problem, because all I do is cut off all those cables. Yeah. <laughs> cables are gone. Yeah, all the backpacks fit, well, yeah. all, the, all the arms fit, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes, it, um, it, for me, it encourages me to be a bit more, um, well, it pushes me to, for my kit bashing, because yeah. it's all loose parts, it's not on the sprue, I don't have the instructions, which is also, can be a bit of a nightmare, because I'm there looking for that arm that might match to that yeah. arm. But I, I do find I get more interest in kit bashes from having them in baggies. But, but that is the solution for space because I don't have it. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to have racks of very useful boxes with it itemized on the inside. That would make more sense. So I do have like little bits boxes as well. So if I, if I kind of get through a, a sprue and I've built like a whole model and there's not much left, I'll just kind of clip those mm. little bits off and just put those in a, in a, a smaller really useful box <laughs> with a sticker on saying what's in there. Um, and I started, to, I kind of got to the point where I, I have loads of space marine bits, just random bits. And it got to the point where just having them in a box was really difficult. So I got one of those... They're like craft boxes, but they use it for like fishing and stuff like mm. that. You can put like oh, tackle little, boxes yeah, and yeah. you've got little spaces in them. Mm-hmm. So I've got like a little section for space marine heads, a little section for space marine shoulders, and then pouches. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then as it goes along all the way and it's like each one's got its own little theme, which is quite good. Because if you know, you just open that box, there's all my pouches, grab that. You know, See, after. I used to have one and they're quite misleading because I I think, I can't remember if it was I was journeying from one house to the next because I was moving out of like this rented flat and going to the house I live at now. But I think I must have stored it in the box because it was like, uh, horizontal but I must have stored it vertical uh, okay, and yeah. there must have been like little gaps between the lid yeah. and the segments and everything just like went oh we're heads we're going to go inside the arms now <laughs> oh we're little pouches and knives we're going to go inside of this one I opened it I was like ah <laughs> that was the day this I was triggered heavily. I've done that where I've had it all sorted out and knocked the box over so I had to pick oh, up the box just resort it. so yeah that's happened before worse, worse. You need for 40k what they do for the have you seen them um, the Lego shakers my my son's got one. You know, um, you know, like a standard Lego figure head. Yeah. Well, inside it, it's like sibs. Oh, okay. And different sizes. So when you shake it, it shakes all the bricks through to different sizes. That's insane. That's really oh, makes wow. sense. Yeah. Yeah, they're all very particular. So, oh, that's a yeah. So yeah. So you, at least you got a. You're not obviously it doesn't solve everything, but it gives you a head start that when you pull that out, you know, the thing I'm after is only two studs wide. It's yeah. going to be in this in pile. The, yeah, in this Dad. in this tray amongst all of the things next so level is it's got lasers it can work out the yeah that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's green that's the next level is it rolls around the house and picks all the bloody pieces up. <laughs> have you seen that guy who makes those like useless inventions on, on instagram and he did something similar where he, ba- he makes stuff which is actually quite clever and he, he 3d prints and designs his products and some of them are just ridiculous absurd <laughs> he actually did a vacuum cleaner that had that sieving thing in oh. there so like you could go around and you like suck up all the lego and it would pre-source it for you oh, which is pretty cool genius, oh, wow. pretty good. yeah, <laughs> yeah we'd, that would well engines. be in our yeah. house if that existed <laughs> the amount of effort that went yeah. into that is insane yeah. uh, i've got a question for you okay um and I, i've heard it come up before on people's arguments ever since sort of uh primaris marines and other things have started this to might be a custard cream job yeah <laughs> What do you think with regards to um, 
the old the older style of kits, be it Marines or and oh, my Imperial Guards or one thing or another. The old ones where they were more multi part mm-hmm. versus the newer ones where they're less multi part mm-hmm. but more dynamic. Yeah. Where'd you fall? Um so I always find that when people complained about the lack of torso like waist movement. The, yeah. For, for, from a kit bashing point of view, obviously it was you kind of lost the ability to swap torsos around mm-hmm. and, and do that. But when people said, oh, you could get more dynamic poses, I don't think you could because most of the time it was like a really awkward kind of yeah. leaning back. Very static. To the side because when you move, the whole of you moves. It's not just like your yeah. torso step moves and the legs stay in the stay same where position. They are, yeah, move position. Um, so... I never felt that it was lost, and I find that some of the new kits are really good. How you can you can make some match from a kit bashing point of view, it does make things a little bit more difficult. Um, but it's not impossible though, because I think the scale creep was the biggest thing. That was the biggest problem for me because it meant that yeah, your shoulder pads and your heads mm. could work and all the extras, but your torsos couldn't be used and the legs couldn't be used and anything like that. Uh, and, and to a, a greater degree, the arms can't use, which is weird because the old the, the Death Watch kit actually scales quite well with the Primus yeah, because yeah. they've got like they're a little bit, a bit bigger. bigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's not. Although if you, I did it with my uh, Empress Children Horus Heresy one, so the new Mark Six Space Marines. Yeah. You can still use Mark well, the older style firstborn torsos on them. Quite a little bit of trimming and clipping, but you can still stick them on quite easily. Because I, I always thought when people when people were saying this to, and they were harking back to the 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 multi part marines, they were going, "Oh, but you haven't, you can't do like you used to be able to." And now, if you look at Primaris, they are all basically everyone's got the same army. They're just a different color. And I know, th- thankfully, with things like the Black Templars and so on coming out, that that the, the gothicness is returning yeah. slowly. But I always remember back in the day. They, they gave this thing of going, oh, they're all multi part, but everyone's army still looked the same anyway. Because yeah. you get you exactly yeah, what you're yeah, saying. They yeah. could only twist a little bit, or the head could move, but you go, and they were just effectively, you know, or, or if there was a conversion, everyone had the same conversion, which was back in the day at Games Workshop, you could go in and you could go up there and order metal parts. Yeah. And they would either have them and they would come out with a box and go, here they are, or they go, you're going to have to come back next week and we'll cast them. There used to be a metal pointing arm for a Devastator sergeant, so even though the sergeant was plastic, the arm was metal. I must have had that arm about nine or ten times. Yeah. You know, it's one of the easiest things to do. And you realised, and then you looked at your mate's army, and he had a pointing arm thing. about nine yeah. or ten times. One person created the conversion, which was a bent Marine's arm, and the hand was the the one of the hands for holding the handlebars of the old motorbike. Okay, yeah. And it was turned up like that. Okay. And all it was done was gripping the the wrist of another one, running, firing a plasma pistol. Okay. So it's that sort of, had that slight tactical sort of thing mm. going on. And then someone did it. And then next thing, you know, everybody's on. Everyone else. You know what I mean? It was like, you know. So you think of going, oh, they were multi-pop, but I was still, I, I don't think, I don't, I, I, I sort of, resp- I sort of love the, dy- the dynamics of them now, in yeah. a way, well, where I sort of, I, I appreciate the, the how much has gone into them now, but yes, there is a loss. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's weird because I I struggle to to see the loss, um, and the reason being is like uh, most of the things I've kit bashed of late, so like Primaris, I don't think there is that they're still pretty multi part. There's still mm-hmm. a lot you can yeah. do with them. Yeah, I agree. Um, Gene Cortis, bar like the torso being set to where the grenades might fit to the guy's lower part of the back where his mm-hmm. bum is. Mm-hmm. But from a glance, they all look very similar anyway in armour. It's just yeah. like the legs, the torso is not that much difference to the other guy next to him. Um, and I was like, I wanted to kit bash the Sister of Battle and I was looking at the Sister of Battle kit. And I always do this thing now when I, a new kit comes out. I try and hold my opinion of like, is it kit bashable or not? And I got Sister of Battle, I built up a squad as it kind of was intended from the set. And that was like my first squad of infantry. And I was like, oh, actually those arms are all very interchangeable. Oh, those heads are all very interchangeable. Um, that weapon from that kit, that, oh yeah, so the Seraphim stuff fits with them, and the Retributor stuff fits with them. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute, they're actually a lot more multi-part than I realised. Um, but like from a pose point of view, a pose is a pose, right? So yeah. like you say that that guy's running from a distance, it's going to be a running person anyway. And I think you can cut the odd torso. Here I think some of the new poses, like like one of my personal favourites. Yeah, it's very specific to look at, but I love. Um, Jumping Phobos Lieutenant, I think it's a great yeah. looking mm-hmm. miniature. Yeah. My, my, and you think and he wouldn't have existed no. fifteen years ago. Well this is the thing as well, like you touched on it with, with the um Sister of Battle. 
yeah, there were probably some of the kits like the old Acadian kit. Yeah, that was you could twist it around the yeah, torso. Yeah. You could the, the old Space Marine kits. You could twist it around the torso as well. But then a lot of the other kits in the range of metal. Yeah. And you couldn't do anything with them. Like no. the old Sword Brethren for yes, Delphi yeah, Tempers, yeah. they were just solid metal chunks. That that was the pose that you had. You had the pose, you had the arms, and that was it. You could maybe mix and match the mm. arms a little bit. But now the norm, the, the new ones, you can swap the arms out, you can swap the heads out, you can do a lot more with them because they're in plastic now than you could do. So whilst we may have lost a little bit of waist movement, and I think people look at Warcry and, and say, oh, yeah, these aren't multi part models and things like that. And it, I've managed it, it. Yeah, you can do yeah. it. It's it's a little bit trickier, but yeah. it's not impossible. Um, I, I've done it with with cipher lords and all sorts of stuff. And, and there's a lot that you can do with those kits if you just don't follow the instructions. And that's the thing. People look at the instructions like, oh well, you can't pose it. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you just if need I to add, go beyond a little bit. If I had one whinge about dynamic miniatures, is that I think, especially because of the Space Marine army I built for my son is wherever possible I, I will use as much of the upgrade sprues as you can get my hands on is generic captains mm -hmm. that thing sometimes are thinking he's great but i've got to carve that shoulder pad out to yeah. get the the one with the with the nice black templar cross i've got it and that sometimes i think i know you carve them up as best as they can to make them fit and and you know and i love how many bits and bobs there is now on kits but i sometimes think i wish you could have just done i wish the shoulder pad wasn't yeah, stuck yeah. halfway under that cape or I wish it wasn't there because you think just to be able to just you know you're selling me beautiful captain's shoulder pads for Black Templars and then and you go but who are they meant to go on yeah. you know and yeah, that yeah. thing of, so other than that but I generally think a lot of the new stuff I think is just yeah, I think it's so like, nice to look at within range as well they are it says everything within Sister about they have the same fitting uh, everything within Drakari has the same fitting there was yeah. a time like I remember when I was doing a, a high elf army so this is the older kids they all had different fittings yeah. so the white lions and the phoenix guard and whatever all had different head joints and arm joints and yeah. it was just like, that was really annoying and I think Necromunda suffers from that a little bit so like the mm -hmm. Dalak versus the Eshers versus the Goliaths they're all very different builds yeah. so it would have been this nice if they're in as a range of stuff, they all have the same kind of fittings, but that's that's. But it's me weird. just being really picky about that. I think I suppose the problem being is, isn't it, with the Necromunda is sometimes half half of their their trait is their size, isn't it? Yeah, there, yeah there's an element there, but I think yeah, there was also different sculptors yeah. trying different things. At well, the I mean, time like as we well. talked about this before, the fact that you know, as you'll have seen, Dalak on the kit have a separate neck to head. Yeah, but then if you buy the the Forge World um, oh, accessory that's accessories, they, they've got a neck. Yeah, <laughs> they got yeah. A neck. just put it together. How does well, that work? I mean, for those guys, I actually for yours, I had to use the neck and then um, trim down the head just to fit onto the neck. Uh, so that's why. Oh. I did, and then um, yours, I think, it is does have a Vansar head, mm. uh, Vansar neck, yeah. and then I've trimmed down the head. Yeah, yeah to work yeah. with that. Um, yeah, and his his had to like yeah, it. Just, I, most of the work I had to do with these was just cutting necks yeah, and then getting yeah. the heads to work. So oh, yeah, he's got um, a flabby neck. Yeah, <laughs> you can't quite fit in his did. helmet. Um, I like to use the Deathcore Krieg. Yeah, um, I know there was a little bit of cutting involved because the the stuff that was probably in the yes, way. Yeah, but I know from like doing some kit bashing with with Imperial Guard stuff that they are fairly interchangeable. Um, but like if you're doing something I was going to touch on is like if you're doing a kill team then you want to go to those levels of making like 10 figures feel like very unique yeah, and stuff yeah. so going to those lengths uh, would, would be quite nice but yeah for the most part you're right to so, say or you could just use the Lasguns just use the basic arms yeah it's just a different option if people want to have maybe like a veteran squad and they want mm, some way yeah. of def differentiating that you, where you put different arms on it um, but yeah all, all the new Cadian stuff's really nice because it's yeah. changed one I think f as far as I can remember that the new kill teams that have come out for like the the rb2s and yeah, the yeah, the breaches yeah. and stuff they you can mix and match to a degree with those yeah, yeah. um but it's, yeah it's, it's nice that i do feel like um i think you you've you mentioned it jeff about one of the things i think was the biggest loss when we moved to primaris was we lost a lot of that chapter specific flair yeah and then it, it kind of came back in the little upgrade sprues, but yeah. there wasn't an awful lot there. No, not a lot. I mean, it was good for my channel because I could tell everyone how to do it and how to, <laughs> to like, convert it. Um, but then when I, when it actually... But Tempest came out and they were like, okay, we're doing an upgrade kit. We're doing actual specific units and stuff. So, I mean, if we see the Blood Angels and uh, um, Dark Angels come in the future... I think it will increase and go that way. And I think the thing that was lovely about the Black Templars one, which was... Yeah, you could just still use it what you want to, but I love the fact... That and I know this might be a thing now where it'll be, they'll disappear in tenth, but was um, that the the Black Templar sprues, the um, 
the relics that were in the book were actually on the upgrade yes, spruce. Yeah. Like, I like that. that was skulls, good, yeah. on, skulls on chains and a, and a particular looking sword and a yeah. crusade. Yeah. That I, the I love cord, the fact yeah. that they literally had a rule, which was lovely. I so thought. I was actually really annoyed by that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pete. I was, I, 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 I was really you just edited that last bit out there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was annoyed by that because I actually had an idea. Because I remember the old... Black, I used to collect Black Templars before, yeah. when they had the old like kits. And I was like, okay. I've got the old... I, the old I remember them having those because I had the, the best game that I had was a um, I can't remember if it was a commander or an empress champion or something like that had the the holy hand grenade mm. that's right yeah and he killed the con effects with it like he was like <laughs> down to his like he'd been like in combat and managed to kill it and we came up with this narrative that he basically did like a power slide underneath it with a sword <laughs> and then threw the grenade inside as he went past and he blew up behind him like cool nice. guys don't look at explosions Absolutely. so I was like oh, okay well I remember all, uh, so I really remember all those like relics and artifacts yeah. like, okay I can do this and I can do a kit bash and show people how to yeah. represent these on the kit and they're like oh we've made a kit that comes with them all like, damn, <laughs> damn you games where strike your that productivity. idea away yeah. Yeah. are Brilliant. you looking to uh, start on the questions there I Pat? think well I've got I've got one last question for myself and then and then um, I think we've been, yeah we've, we've been an hour so you know what we did we had a little chat beforehand and said we're terrible at promoting our Patreon. Let's talk about the giveaway for this month. And then we just forgot to do it. Well, do you, well, do you, are you, is, is Pete happy to be Debbie McGee to... <laughs> um, to talk to him. Well, we'll do your question, then we'll... we'll yeah, go yeah, on. yeah, amazing. So... Um, it, well, Games Workshop recently had, um, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to ask like for your opinion either way, um, unless you wanted to be like yes, strong opinions, um, with their painting videos, and they they went to the the only hands yeah. method of presenting, um, and w there was a, like a bit of outcry from the community or backlash against it because it used to be presenter led and now it's sort of mm -hmm. a pair of hands and. On some people saying this is really bad, we don't like it. It needs to be like more personal, and you know you want to see a face and you learn better. Um, but then you've been very successful mm -hmm. um, with being a pair of hands. Yeah. Um, and is is that was that a conscious decision that that's what you want to do? Or you, like, did you not really want to appear like your face in the videos? Or um, that kind it, of thing? It's it's it came about for you pure laziness, laziness really. It just basically. Yeah didn't want because I, I had one camera yeah and i didn't want to reset that up to do a, a piece of camera and then reset it up to my painting thing and so I'll, yeah. just, I'll just do it on the i'll just do it with my hands and i'll just yeah. talk to, so that's kind of how it came about and i thought well people seem to enjoy this and just kind of carried on with it yeah but i think in terms of like obviously I, i've had a few people asking me because I, I do have like, in that groups and people have said about oh what do you think of it and i think I've seen lots of reasons and you guys have spoken about it in the past and I think it's one of those situations where I don't think it's necessarily being done to protect the people because mm. if they wanted to I'm sure they could do it if they wanted to mine's mine's a choice but not through like I don't want people knowing my face otherwise we would just been sat black <laughs> yeah. right. Right. For, yeah. no. I'll put the blur filter back yeah. on <laughs> yeah. so it's not even like I'm, I'm worried that like people know what I look like or anything like that it's just it's just more of just that's just the way it is yeah. and maybe in the future I will decide to put my face in the videos a little bit more mm. yeah um but I think it should be, if it is a down to whether or not people are comfortable with that or not, that should be their decision. Um, yeah. And I don't necessarily think that's the reason, but I don't know enough about it personally. It's just an opinion. Yeah, no, that's cool. I, I, I think you're spot on. I, I appreciate um, that you're like, I'm just lazy. It's fine. Just, just lazy, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> If I, th these, these lights stay exactly where they are yeah. all the time. Because um, I know that if I had to put that up every time, I want to use it. I just wouldn't bother. Yeah, like I'm a lazy filmmaker. <laughs> so I, I, I did. I did something um, before I left to, to join Pat, and I was like, having a because I knew I was going to go uh, from workshop, and I was like, how do I go about doing filming? I've not done this before for myself. Obviously, I've, I've used the cameras and I've seen editing and stuff like that. So I got an app. I was talking to some friends, and they suggested some good apps for editing mm -hmm. and stuff. And I, I literally painted a clone trooper, forty uh, first uh, elite core. So they're in the camo, uh, Kashyyyk camo style. So I literally just had my phone on a tripod, sat there and just painted the stage at a time. And I'd set it so it was always in the same kind of place. So yeah. I was like, do the stage, do that stage. But I didn't have a second camera for palette. And I know you're going to hate me for this. So I did separate palette shots, then edited them in 
because I only had the one camera. That's why I do now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I know, like, from, like... Walnut. I just slide the pallet in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just do the, do the pallet and slide it back yeah, out yeah, and then yeah. like, carry on. That's not bad. I should have done that. I should have done that. Visions of the pallet just being on a little bit of fishing wire. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I was, at the time, I was like, I was still working for Workshop. I was like, oh, maybe I should just post this and see how well it does. And I sent you, and you were like, what platform is this for? Because I had the orientation of my phone the wrong way around I should have done it this way around so it was more like for TikTok as opposed to yeah, YouTube yeah. Um, so there's a few things I was tweaking on but I could totally appreciate your point of view just going it's too much hassle yeah. <laughs> I think like when you had um, when you had Dave on and like his, his like filmmaking is like amazing oh yeah he's, he's, have you seen yeah. his like drop pod yes drop yeah, yeah. Video? I, the, haven't, I haven't watched no, that yet the intro for that yeah. is just great and I'm just watching yeah. it thinking this is like a hobby video and mine, oh, mine's it, like yeah yeah and it's really good and so so f- f- I can tell that he like obviously really enjoys making those yeah. videos. He really enjoys that process. And for me, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm more of a. I, f- I see myself more as a teacher than a filmmaker. Mm, so yeah. for me, I the, the the videos are just a medium to get the lessons that I want to teach out to people. Yeah. yeah. Um. So for me, it's kind of like a case of well, if I've got two dials and two like sliders that I can do, or I can either put most effort into doing the video and doing the tutorial and, and making it look fancy and everything that like more interesting or I can kind of spend more time on making sure the script is clear, making sure that the um, the build that I'm doing is interesting, things like that. And with it just being me, I, I do all my own editing and everything like that. So I have to kind of balance that out and make sure that what I'm yeah. putting the effort in is the best. And for me, it's just, I, I, I prefer doing yeah. the uh, the actual filming of stuff rather than editing. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, editing can... Um... <laughs> You, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, every, yeah. Just a sort of slow, just have yeah flashbacks of uh, editing screens and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but the the Warhammer stuff, um, I find a lot more creative than say like because I've crikey, three hundred and fifty weddings now, something like that. Mm. It's it's a lot. Um, and you see two people get married, and and you're like, oh yeah, cool, another one that's found their soulmate. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and 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 like such an old romantic. Just a bit like <laughs> yeah. I think just give it two years. Yeah. <laughs> just a bit desensitized to it now i think i think um and 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 that kind of thing or from from like a because i don't know them um like i'm filming a friend's wedding uh next week Mm. in in france uh which would be good fun but because i know them i think it it will be quite interesting yeah yeah. um and i'm excited to see if it'll be a bit different but anyway this isn't a conversation about that it's about (laughs) warhammer isn't it i was going to talk about what we've got to give away go on so we've got April coming up. Uh, so if you uh, want to join the channel, uh, get, join us on Patreon. Uh, we're going to be putting to giveaway. There's going to be a question, and there'll there'll be four options of answer, which we'll deliver in a minute or two. But first of all, we have Morgan Roth. You hold Morgan Roth for us. I did say a really rubbish joke before we went live. Uh, I'm not going to say it now because yeah, it was rubbish. But yeah, Morgan Roth. Uh, this, this was another thing I got annoyed with. I was just thinking ever so. Well. <laughs> 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 When, when Eldar were getting released and they hadn't announced him yet, and I was like, oh, I could make, I could make like uh, new like Phoenix Laws, and then they released him. I was like, great, that's another, another idea. <laughs> Scratch that. Some they've not done, so you know. Still... There is, yeah, so I think I still need to go back you, you, to that. You, you, you can do this, you've got yeah. this, Pete. And then we have a Nemesis Dreadnought. Thank you, Debbie McGee. Okay. It's very good. <laughs> uh, Mosrog Scragbad. I can't even say his name. I think he builds the video as well, doesn't he? Yeah, you can, build, you can build a couple of options, yeah. And then. Or 12 of them if you Pete. <laughs> so these will all be individual, won't they? It's not yeah, like a bundle yeah, yeah, this time yeah. round. There's no like army. So, you know, you might get this, you might get that, you might get that. You might get a Joy Toy Blood Angel Intercessor. Oh, Ooh, look at that bad boy. With Chris Peach's head, I think, <laughs> or close to it, fully shaved. Uh, so that's an option. You can sit for hours playing with action figures. And who doesn't want to do that? And then we have Kill Team Morrick as well. Oh, so wow. So could all be in a chance. I've got that one. It's a really good kit, that one. I like that. The blooded are amazing. Oh, the scene is so amazing. Cool. I'm yeah. not massively zazzed by the Marines because the Marines are Marines to me. I've seen them. Yeah, but they've got them. Um, to be fair, with the, there's a few more little specialists in that one, and the the, the little ads on bits of kits for it are quite. Yeah. Is that the yeah. one with the the dabbing? Yeah, that's him. Oh, of course, yeah. 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 I like the one that's the one who looks like he's doing something. There's one who looks like he's tweaking the side of his sights. Okay, which I quite like. He's got yeah. the gun over, and he's sort of like he's he's adjusting something. Yeah. That looks pretty cool. He's the marksman. Marksman. Stat. Nice. Yeah, so cool. going back to the giveaway, if you join our Patreon, uh, any tier, doesn't matter, uh, all you need to do is answer the following question. What is Pete the Wargamer's first name? Is it A, Steve, B, Steve-O, C, Stephen, or D, Pete? 
And if you put your answer in the, because we'll put a post up, uh, if you put your answer in there, then you'll be in for a prize, or potentially in for the draw for the prize. So, yes. So, uh, Steve, moving on to our... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our Patreon questions. Patreon questions. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. That's going to really trigger. throw him off, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad we got Steve the Wargamer on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve. Um, <laughs> sorry, do <you> apologise. <laughs> it's Steve-o. It's, I'm really bad at this. So many different Steves. Um... Wonderful. So, uh, yeah, we have a ton of questions um, from our patrons. I'll, I, I doubt we'll get through them all. So, some of them are quite advance. similar, though. So, I think you, um, you, you'll, you'll, yeah. If you so, answer one, you'll be answering about five. I think. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Okay, so um, the line got released recently, mm-hmm. and I saw um, a community post on YouTube from yourself saying, yeah. "Phil Grimm." Was it Fulgrim? No, no, it Conrad Kurz. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kurz, yeah. I just posted My a picture on part. I'm going to convert it to Conrad Kurz. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, Excuse me. potentially tying into that, um, yeah. like, how do you go about planning and conversion? Um, so there's, there's usually two ways. So the, the, the Lion model was like, so I kind of see one of them is like working my way from an idea and the other one's working my way back from a model. So with Comrade, it was kind of a, I saw, so the Lion model, I saw that and I was like, what can I turn that model into? I want to turn it into something. It's really, the Primark models like give you a lot of options and stuff like that. What I looked at his armor and what can I use that for? And then I thought I can probably get something quite similar to Conrad Kerr's going in there. Other times it's more of a, I'll either get inspired by a piece of lore, a piece of art, be it in like a codex or just random, completely unrelated to Warhammer. Cause I get, I like collecting art books from like when games are released and things like that. And they've always got really interesting stuff. So I'll often go through that. I'll get an idea and then I'll try and work out which kits I need to actually to build that idea and that's kind of an iterative po- process sometimes i'll realize i can't really build it very easily out of the kits that i've got so it gets scrapped or I might come back to it later if a new kit mm. gets released and then i just once i'm happy with what i've got i'll literally it, it, it looks a bit weird if you kind of come to my office i've sat on, on my floor in my office just surrounded by like almost like a pentagram of sprues and if anyone comes <laughs> in just think i'm like trying like pray to the dark gods for ideas but i'm just literally sat in the middle i'm just kind of getting a sprue and looking like okay, is that is that kit going to work with that kit is that part going to be the right size things like that so i often do that and that's from there i start building it and hopefully sometimes it doesn't always work out once i've started building and i kind of have to scrap it but from there it gets made into a video because i thought you're gonna have a great carpet cut everything out and sprinkle it across. <laughs> <laughs> and then what you find is how you make it <laughs> what's this random random I just got a Lego head and shake it. Yeah, so can, yeah, yeah. can you also put a shoulder, a uh, little uh, pouch on Conrad Kersey's yeah, shoulder? I'll to do that. Yeah, I've got to take <laughs> a human skin pouch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, not, oh, nice. Uh, do you test the conversions and painting schemes prior to the videos? Uh, no. <laughs> I just, just basically try it. If it doesn't work, then yeah. do it gets again. moved. Because really I, yeah. I assumed that the answer would be no, because otherwise you'd, you'd be like, look, I've got two Angron conversions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and that would be, that would be a lot of work. To, to, to get into that a bit more, if there's a colour scheme you've never tried before, do, is that something you test on a random model before doing it? Or do you just go straight in? I probably should do. Oh, you're a ballsy um, guy. If, <laughs> the, the thing is, I've got to a stage now where most of the time I've, I've, I've done some sort of combination. Yeah, so if, if yeah. it might be not painted red with another colour, I've painted red and I've painted another colour yeah, and yeah. I can kind of get a rough idea. Um, but no, sometimes I don't know if it's going to work until the, the end. And sometimes halfway through painting the model, I'm thinking this isn't working. Yeah, yeah. And I get to the end of the video, like, oh, it did work in the end, which yeah. is, which is <laughs> good. Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> no, skill. Uh, so <laughs> It's luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could create Kitbash, any character from the 40k canon, uh, who would it be and why? Um, probably, I, I do quite like Kitbashing the old characters that still haven't been made into like plastic so like Caldor Drago's pump someone keeps mm. I think every day someone's like doing like day 17 of asking for a Caldor Drago oh, kit yeah, yeah, in the yeah, comments yeah. Um, so I probably will have to get to her and do that at some point but I, I think I would like to do the Emperor at some point like mm, yeah. but then I can know as soon as I do that games which are going nice I'm releasing the Emperor as a model <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so yeah maybe I should do maybe people should pay me to kit bash the Emperor so it gets released as a, an official model yeah. so Ooh, I should do yeah. you're just yeah. a yeah. really annoy Games Workshop and just literally do the a husk of a body in a chair. <laughs> yeah, just do that. Because that's not the model they're going to release. I guess it's, it it's quite good because you, you, you could use a sword from Gilliman, yep. you can use the shield from the, from the lion, and then 
Yeah. yeah. Just just wait until the Primarchs are released and they all have bits of stuff. Yeah. yeah. From sorry. the Emperor. It's like Wearing a the Emperor's like cod piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 um, how do you approach kit bashing an army compared to a single model? Are, there um, any, are, is it, are the approaches different? So I, th- I think it depends. It, it, they both tie into each other quite well because I was saying, to, saying earlier if you want to build like an army and you want to kitbash an army then if you want to kitbash every single model it's obviously going to be a lot more expensive a lot more time consuming but you can do an awful lot just by focusing on unit leaders yeah. and characters and stuff like that um, so if you keep bashing a character you can go a bit more all out because that's going to be like one of maybe three or four characters you've got on your force mm-hmm. depending on what you're collecting but if you're building units, you've got to be a little bit more sparing, although it's going to cost a lot. You're never going to get it built because you're yeah. going to be constantly kit bashing. So I think that's probably the difference yeah. between the two. Excellent. Um, would you ever consider doing a video of a conversion with just the pieces left over from other conversions? <laughs> well, technically, because I buy the, the whole kits, yeah. all the pieces that I use are left yeah. over from other conversions. But I think what they mean is like if I just bought the kits and like that, I could use a torso from that ultra room. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. where the, the uh, singular from. Um, I haven't, no, but I have used compart parts from that I've used in previous kits. Yeah. Uh, have there been a? Uh, have you had a conversion idea which has just been too expensive to justify? Uh, no, probably too expensive to be sensible, but not too yeah. expensive to justify. Um, because I think if usually when I've had an idea, it's it's normally like something with Angron, for example. It's quite yeah. a, obviously a big kit, and it's a, an expensive kit to go wrong if you need to like replace mm. something in there. Yeah. Um, but I always find that if if I go into it with enough planning, then it's often justified because people are going to find it interesting as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe something like if I just kit bash like a, a full scale. Night Titan or something like that. Yeah, big. yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, you probably get a lot of kit bashing questions. So, what brushes do you use? <laughs> um, I use Artis Opus brushes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm currently on them as yeah, well. Yeah. I really like them. Number three is my favourite. Oh. Yeah. I, need to I use three actually. Yeah, it's still an army painter. Two and three. Still an army painter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I've I, I've got a break a breakout of two. Yeah, I find like the triple zeros and stuff. I really struggle to use because mm. I'm just. Crap. Um, <laughs> but I've got to be honest. Since we got, we all got an army painter mega brush each set each, didn't we? And I've got to be honest. I I live in that a lot more than I do the mm. art. Yeah. If it's something where I know it's going to look look really as crisp as I can do it, I'll go into yeah. the artist opus. But that um that army painter character brush, massive fun of that. Yeah. So it's yeah, just I've, a I've nice. It's it got loads. a lovely point and yeah. it's just the right size. That it can do a little bit of everything. I tried using the regiment brush to do a lot of the layering. And yeah, yeah, the cases. regiment brush is pretty good. I used yeah. to use the regiment and the character brush yeah. quite a lot. I, I yeah. found the regiment one was just too unwieldy. I'm I don't def- know if it's I desperately want to have a go one. using that psycho on a set on a pair of eyes and see what it actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 and there's the uh, all it's made has three hairs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, having the de- details good. I, yeah. I definitely yeah. character and detail a lot for a lot of my painting. And then those dry brushes. <laughs> <laughs> and hitting the table. Oh, Smash the table. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like hear that in, in my that. headphones. Sorry about that, Pat. How's your ears? Uh, Go on. Yes. Cool. No, it's fine. Uh, okay, lovely. Uh, what's your favourite conversion that you've done? And what's your favourite conversion that someone else has done? Mm. Oh. Um, I suppose these are kind of linked because I did my big Necrofax Colossus. It's probably my favourite one because it was like the most scratch built model that I built because I just yeah. built it out of Skaven war machines and bits of sprue and the Idenest ships was probably my favourite one and then there's a guy on Instagram called Luke Mockridge and he does a lot of like really he, he's done Depth Guard so like Death Guard but I've themed, seen them they're so on, like, good yeah water. like the, they're all based around a bit like the idea of old like you know like old fashioned uh, 1930s deep sea divers mm. with the big brass helmet thing going on they're yeah. all a bit like that aren't they and they're very corroded and yeah they're lovely as very a death cool. car player i really appreciate that mm. and uh yeah so he's got a really great way of doing barnacles and he basically uh, has got like a, a rivet mold for doing rivets and there's little square rivets on there like well hexagonal ones and he basically does those and then chops the tip off and they're like little barnacles oh, so uh, so i followed that video up with a rotting leviathan which is like a big crab version of it and i used like spoke to him asked him what he did and then used it so yeah i think Necrovax classes for me and probably Luke Mockridge's stuff. Mm, awesome. Nice. Yeah. Uh, question from Tony here. I feel that everyone is dodging around the elephant in the room. Bacon butties, ketchup or brown sauce? <laughs> yeah, true. Yes. Yeah, ketchup. Oh. oh. But 
<laughs> if it's sausage, if I have a sausage sandwich, then it'll be brown sauce. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Or secondary question, ketchup in the cupboard or in the fridge? Um, mine's in the fridge. Yeah. It does yeah. say, because uh, I used to keep them in the in the cupboard, like yeah, yeah, store yeah. in a cool dry place, but then they started saying refrigerate and consume within ketchup, so many days. The Heinz ketchup out of the fridge. Yeah. yeah, I know it's weird because you're putting something very cold on something very hot, yeah. but strangely works. I know you've not asked me, but um, it's not. I just want to chuck it in there because I'm normally a brown sauce guy on bacon cobs and sausage cobs, but I recently got the mustard from IKEA. And oh, it's a okay. thing of wonder, isn't and it? I had that on the sausage cob last night, and oh my god! But the problem with tomato so- tomato sauce is you don't get that lovely rattle on the tongue that you get with a cup of tea once you've had brown sauce, oh, where yeah. all the spices yeah. just slightly mm. reactivate. Oh right, yeah, which oh. I think is. Is, is a bit special interesting yeah. but yeah you're right about sausage cobs I'm sausage. gonna I'm gonna keep an air of mystery around me and not answer that <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be like it's mayonnaise and sour cream <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like to feel it like going through me nose <laughs> <laughs> through me tear ducts <laughs> don't know why I give you that voice <laughs> <laughs> okay um, who's your favourite miniature manufacturer um I'd say the obvious answer is going to be Games Workshop, so I'm not going to say that. Um, I really like War Games Atlantic stuff at the mm. moment. So they do like lots of like um, plastic kits. They're doing like historical stuff, but they're also doing their own like sci-fi range as well. Remind me what they they some of their ranges. I um, so them. they did the the the, the spout grognars, which is like Gronar or some Gronar. Yeah, um, they like the French kind of sci-fi themed ones, and they've done like then bear skins and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, um, okay. But they do a Napoleonic range as well. Yeah, plastic, yeah. some really nice stuff. Um, they videos. do some English riflemen, and they do some Prussian. But they do an army builder set, so like the the, the models are like really basic. Mm. They're really nicely printed, but they're just in a single piece and you stick a head on them. Yeah. So it's the idea if you want to build like a full regiment really quick. I've never seen a kit that comes with so many heads. Yeah. Oh they're, yeah, they stick tons them, of heads and stuff. The, yeah. the bare skin guys, I'm not going to pronounce that. The bare skin guys, I don't know how many you're making. The kits you make about 25 or something. It comes about 106 heads because yes. it does bare skin with a face, bare skin with a gas mask, yep. kepe with a face, kepe with a gas mask, yep. First World War. The Adrian so, helmets. Yeah, do, are First are World War French helmets. 28 mil or are they? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I used to do some Vostrian conversion. My, yeah. uh, my, my, um, my mate Tim, he... Um, he generally uh, makes them and then puts them on um, Scutari legs. Yeah, they could. So they've got that and does sort of weird, sort of them as this weird cyborg thing. And they basically do their own Steel Legion as well, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Which are really nice as well. You did you did someone with a bear skin? In one of your, yeah, so it was, was, it, was, it, was, it was the, the Vostrian firstborn and he used their heads for do that because uh, yeah. I was trying to work out where that head was from because at first yeah. when I looked I was like is that one of the Victrix ones yeah. but no uh, okay. they've also done a um, they've partnered with Reptilian Overlords and released a plastic kit of called Space Nam but it's like plastic catachins mm. or catachins and uh, my models are on the front of that box uh, I painted some models for the box oh, art, so, yeah. so that's one of my favourite because awesome because I've got some photos on there <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, why dead animal bits where did it come from? Oh, I don't. I kept saying it. It, it came about because yeah. I would just say, "Oh, I'm just going to stick some like dead animal bits on there." Just had a, a, a extra, extra detail, and I just said it quite a few times, and people started saying, "What? Where the dead animal bits go in?" Or <laughs> I'd say dead animal bits in like a different way. I've got some like some bones here. I was going to put those on, and people would miss it. So it just became. Yeah, but you do it for skulls me. as well, don't you? When you say dead animal bits. Yeah, I so do it for that. everything. Now, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, well, it's a rating animal. as well now, isn't it? Oh uh, well, it used to be. Yeah, and then I forgot to put it in a few times, and then I was like, <laughs> I, just, I just forget I did that for a bit. <laughs> oh, I like the dead animal bits rating. Yeah, I, it got yeah. to the point though where everything was just five or four. So <laughs> yeah, up there yeah. with peaches, <laughs> up there with peaches yellows rating. Oh, yeah. It was a thing of wonder as well. <laughs> That's a weird rating system. Yeah, that, loved it. that was a fun day in the office. Um, if tyranids are potentially on the horizon, uh, this was asked. Yeah, before the, the uh, Adepticon release, I guess, because they are. Um, do you have any kitbash ideas for new big gribbly monsters? So, the problem with that I find with a lot of the Xenos factions is you've got a lot of customizations that are options for you for like the human factions. It's always just been the case, mm. but Tyranids are kind of the the outlier there because you can just do anything. There's a guy called Modern Synthesis on Instagram who does some amazing like kit. He's just so much. Tyranid kit bashes, and I'd love to do more like different, like my own genus types and stuff like that. Um, but they're quite easy if you can do sculpting and you don't mind like chopping up the armor paste and carapaces from other Tyranid kits, they're all very usable together. Mm. 
with a little bit of work and you can do some really interesting stuff because they're organic. Yeah. You don't have to yeah. have stuff matching because this arm's got to match up with this arm. You can just stick some small arms on it. And some well, yeah, because you have like one ordinary arm and another arm that's like about nine tentacles and yeah. things, yeah. don't these? So, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So it, they're quite forgiving. I think they're, I would say they're probably easier to kit bash than orcs mm. yeah. in a way. Yeah, because yeah, you, we always talk about scrapping orcs yeah. and you can get, make anything orky. I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting point of view. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was your most? I'm not sure if we covered this or not. What was your most challenging conversion? Hmm. That was going to be one of my questions, and I forgot. So the Thank Necroflex you. Colossus was difficult because it involved scraping down a lot of sprues, just like cutting off the tabs and like making them into like rods, and it took a long time to do that and get everything. To, I basically took all the kits. So I took the Skaven weapons teams, like the the scrap launchers mm. things, and. I, I would basically cut out the wooden planks from them because they come in like A-frames. So I cut off them and cleaned those up and then reassembled everything, which was quite difficult. So it took ages. I didn't have a Dremel at the time, and I do now, and it's much easier. That yeah. would have been much easier. So it's probably my most difficult Should've one. Should have Goblin Town. Yeah. I did think about doing that, actually. <laughs> but there's a lot time. of bones. There's a lot of dead animal bits. Well, that's the God. reason why I didn't do it because I thought I'm going to have to scrape all those <laughs> yeah, off yeah. as well. I just, I just remembered, actually, yeah, yeah. there's so much bone and like rags and stuff on there. Yeah. It's a terrible idea. Ignore me. This is why you <laughs> do kit bashing more than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of people had a similar question, um, which was, is there a miniature or sculpt that you think is perfect and wouldn't convert? Mm, I would say that the the Primark series, the, the Horus Heresy Primark series, is pretty good. Like the new Horus Ascended is really nice. Yeah, yeah it's I really modern. like that. Yeah. So we, we'll get, yeah, wonderful. That's mm -hmm. the answer. I'm just eyeing up this battery. It's got 4% left. Um, <laughs> have you considered narrating audiobooks? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> got some good ASMR, that's for sure. Well, that's the thing, because I... I, I like going back to what I was saying about when I'm building, the, making the videos, the scripting, the voiceover, and the editing is like my least favourite bits. So I just kind of like, I'm, I'm sitting down, I'm going to do my voiceovers and today, and I'm getting them all done. Because it was quite funny, wasn't it? It was when you, the, the first time a lot of people will have seen you was on the Horus Heresy interviews. Mm. And there was a lot of people who were surprised by the voice and the, uh, the voice and the face, wasn't he? I seen that come up in, in yeah. comments quite a lot. Really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what people are expecting there. Cause I, mean, I think they were expecting someone older. I think, yeah. yeah. Well, Honestly, the voices... I, I, I expect you to be like a little bit older, yeah. bold like me, maybe. <laughs> It is interesting. Like, did, like, did you hear a voice and go, oh, that sounds like a bald, a bald man? Guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the time of the resonance. In there, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can tell, you can tell. I'm going to listen to all my clients now who are coming in for a head shave see if their voice changes after they've yeah, had yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I, I think regardless of, of what people look like, I think you... Um, I remember watching... Oh, who was... There was a... A guy who did science like documentaries on the BBC like ages ago, and he had the most amazing moustache. Um, it was like Child of Our Time. Mm. When, uh, oh yeah, I knew you mean that. But they they did one where they um, s somebody was doing a voiceover, and there was a guy with a really deep voice, and they asked all of these they asked all these women what they thought this man would look like, and it would everybody was got it like completely wrong because yeah. it was like. What do I want him to look like? Yeah. Um, rather than that, so I think when when it's like the voice and the face, and then you just like that wasn't my mental image. I am <laughs> shook. <shooketh>. The, the <laughs> biggest one for me was Alex Doddy uh, when he, he did Kill Team. Yeah, and his voice did not match his face at all because he's got like that like, nice little hairstyle. He's a very like attractive man with nice beard and stuff like that. And his voice is very deep and all that. <laughs> they got someone to voice over the voice <laughs> didn't match but when you talk to him because we played a couple of Warcry games before I left he just talk, talks normal he doesn't yeah, so he's definitely funny, got, yeah. uh, he's got a voice uh, for, for his okay. presenting 2% left oh wow that's going oh, down quick. To, yeah it's going down really quick hour and 45 minutes we're going to I don't know how we got to two hours with uh, Mikey the other day uh, so uh, quick fire ones before we have to go how many times have you glued your fingers together not very often because you use plastic glue. Ooh, Good yeah. answer. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what paint tastes the best? <laughs> uh, Vallejo. Oh, yeah. I'll try that. Oh, nice. yeah. It's got a little like a lemony tang to it. Well, yeah. and oh. Spanish, you know. Yeah. I've been, I've been spitting yeah. out a lot of AK. You know, yeah. 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 Oh, they're quite bitter. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Contrast the worst. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. grim. Yeah. Oh, you said that uh, gold from AK didn't taste very oh, nice. I tasted horrid. I yeah. thought I was going to die. Did you stay up until 3 a.m. to watch the Warhammer reveals? No. no. <laughs> I just won't come up. I did yeah, all the time. Yeah, same. <laughs> Lovely. And, um, <laughs> oh, someone just saying, uh, I loved the Cadian Castellan conversion that you did. 
I'm going to give it a go myself. Thank you for the video. You made it very easy to follow. Mm. Cool. So, so there we go. That was the auxiliary, wasn't it? The, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll wait until it gives me the orange warning. Yeah. Uh, and says, "What are you doing? You should really turn it off now." <laughs> um, and then I'll hit stop because then otherwise we might lose all that video file, yeah, which would be that. terrible. Well, thank we'll you very much for coming yeah. on, Pete. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, quite I've nervous about showing my face, but then Jeff, <laughs> Jeff was there, hair and makeup beforehand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel really pretty. <laughs> yeah. I rubbed so, you down yeah. some Vaseline. Yeah, yeah so it's good. Just like just loosen me up. There we go. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's going off. Coming on. And as always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Uh, I wanted to say describe again. I keep saying describe <laughs> in the videos because I just it's yeah. slip of the tongue. Um, and and thank you as always to our patrons for supporting us because it's important for our support, isn't it? We need it. It's what keeps this lot going. Gets yeah. guys like this on. You can't see him because you're looking at me right now, <laughs> and that camera's not working. So I'm just pointing at the side. So it there's, could be anyone. There's anyone's a camera, camera. there. So there's a camera. Yeah, between the two. Yeah, yeah. Checking it in. But yes, thank you very much to support. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for the figures. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't wait to get mine painted. Look forward to seeing them painted up. Yeah. I haven't paint seen like you. yours. Because you were bold yours, in my head now. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, like. oh yeah, I've passed oh, my yeah. I was looking at Pat's here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're going to do show and tell now. And yeah. uh, we'll oh, leave he's you awesome. Thank yeah. you for watching, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.